it doesn't matter what you want. I will succeed, whether you like it or not. I am unstoppable. When will you learn that? When will you learn that? Again, Mr. Williams, I invite you to conversate with me directly. I don't do all this internet stuff. The problem is, is you're going after my family, you post my children, and then you mention my name. So you and I, we need to have a conversation. And yes, this is a forever problem. It's me, Darius Cooks, also known as your local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, grown up in Chicago. You just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, we were crews. We had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, LaBelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now, especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Come to think of it, let me not bring his name up because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to, where's the expose? Where is the expose? So they don't know what's about to go on. You just attack them. You just attack them. Mother. What did I say? I said, you better do what I said to do. Did they think you're crazy? If they think you're crazy, they'll just walk away slowly like that. Uh, we drove all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina to get scammed by Darius Cooks. And boy, did he scam us good. We were so, so enthralled by everything. We are so impressed, and I can't wait to get scammed again. Thank you, Darius Cooks, for an amazing, amazing experience. We talked about it all the way back to the hotel. Love you, and hello to our table mates who were so amazing and friendly. Five, six, seven, eight. Why you gotta lie so much? You must wake up and just make up stuff. Cause I just do not understand why. Every time you talk, you tell a quick lie. Hey! You and your lies gotta go. It cause I'm tired of talking to Pit Nokia Yo. Then you had a nerd to look folks in the eyes. Knowing that you telling them lies. You be telling them lies. I asked you about this. Did you lie about it? Hey! I asked you about that. Did you lie about it? Hey! Get them lies together. They all over the place. I bet that Jesus came back. You a lot of his face. Let's go, cause I don't believe that you say it. This one.
What's up, good people? Let me know that you can hear me in the chat by typing either 50,000, as in 50,000 subs, or scamming Bali. 50,000 subs or scamming Bali because we are working our way towards 50,000 subs, and Darius Crooks is working towards scamming Bali or getting scammed by Bali. <laughs> so, either way, it works. Thank you to everyone who's letting me know that you can hear me. Uh, Delilah, Lisa, Melly, Dr. T Dub, HPP, Margin, and it's jumping, and everybody else who's letting me know over here on the Facebooks and at YouTube that you can hear me. And also, uh, what's up to our viewers over there on Instagram? Um, so. Uh, yes, we are working our way towards 50,000 subscribers, so please uh, hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel or you have been watching repeatedly, which there's a, like 60% of you who watch a lot and have not hit that subscribe button. Be greatly appreciated if you did. Uh, also, hit that like button and share this video. So thank you to out of the 143 of you who voted over here on the YouTube side. Thank you to the 88% of you who have already uh, hit that like button and share this video. The 12% of you who have it, but took the poll that always confuses me because <laughs> you hit the poll to say, no, nah, I didn't share it. I didn't hit like, I didn't share, but you hit the poll. <laughs> okay. Please hit it when you get a chance. It'd be greatly appreciated. It is uh, free to you, but it is invaluable to me and the growth of this channel and the goal of reaching 50,000 subscribers. We is like, we is, I'm going to say, uh, I, I said what I said. We is like, uh, I think like 4,000 or something, a little over 3,000 uh, sub subs away from that. I know I got to do, I got to put out more content. I got to get these reels and shorts and stuff. I understand, but y'all please do your part as well. So moving into um, this episode here, thank you to those who are reaching out saying, Vail, you took too many days off. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I, I needed a break, y'all. This this be a lot pulling all these pieces together and keeping up with her shenanigans, Darius Crooks. So I took, um, I, I just <laughs> wasn't feeling it. So I took some time off, but I was on Patreon. So for those of you who uh, are not a part of our Patreon, consider joining that. It's uh, There's a free part of it. And then you also have... Uh, it started at uh, $5 where you get access to our game nights, which we should be doing next week, uh, as well as exclusive live streams, me out running errands, me going for walks, us just having talks, us doing shenanigans. We do our own foolishness um, over there. So, um, yeah, check it out. And so when you think I'm missing, I'm not really missing. I just might not be over here on YouTube putting out content. But um, today, what we are going to be doing, what I what happened while I was uh, away, Corey Brim, who is the former um, member of the defunct, now defunct uh, Three Kings tour, took to his social media, took to his uh, Facebook and Instagram to say that he um, he needed to address what was happening or what had happened, what had happened with the uh, three kings or two kings and a queen tour. And um, he said a lot of people were asking him, I'm kind of like you a, a, a dollar a, a dollar short and a day late on this, but have at it. And he gave a whole hour dissertation, uh, an inspirational talk. And I edited it down for y'all. I got it down to like 30 something minutes, had to torture myself twice, one to record it, another time to edit it. But that's what I do for y'all. That's why I be needing breaks. We did 35 lives or 36 lives last month, y'all. That was a lot. That was a lot. So I was feeling it. But um, that's what we're going to we're going to do a reaction to that. Then we got some other little tidbits in here uh, with Darius Crooks, uh, you know, latest shenanigans as uh, he is now in Bali officially for the month of April. Um, we'll see what he gets into. But he's already... He may not be getting into stuff with the people of Bali yet, but he shows still getting into it with the um, social media. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, so we're going to start off this episode as we start off uh, all with our 
um, in, mem in memory of, so we never forget, Darius Crook's uh, rants and meltdowns. And we start off with the, uh, some of your favorites. This, you know what? This is the thing, it don't come up no more. This is far as it come up. I guess I didn't get the one with the extra long handle on it. It's fine. I, this one, I like the spin mark. You really gotta touch it. I twisted the pole. This is far as it go up. It only go to uh, 48. What's 48? Two, four, six, eight. That's four feet. This four feet tall. This is about four feet. This is about two feet. This two more feet. This tall as it go to 48. That's it. It's not meant for me. It's meant for Maria. I love this mop. Girl, it don't the fuck go up. Extendable telescope. 22 to 36 inches or 36 to 48. Bitch, you got two choices. 22 to 36 or 36 to 48. That's it. It don't go no fucking higher than that. Okay? Now, do you want the flow clean or not? What the fuck do the size of the mop got to do? Girl, twist. I have twisted. Do you... Girl, down, up. Down, up. Down, up. I'll talk to y'all later. You want to tell me how to live my life, how to run my life? No, keep doing what you're doing and let me do what I'm doing. And when I need your suggestion, I'll come and ask you. But you've not heard me ask you for a suggestion. So why are you offering? I can offer you one. Stop eating so much. Lose weight. Stop spending so much money. Learn how to save. Get your credit score up. Quit sleeping next to a man who don't fucking love you. Get some self-esteem. Get some self-encouragement. You see how a slippery slope this is? Do you see what slippery slope we go down when I never asked you for a suggestion? See how it feels? Not, not too good, huh? Not too good, right? Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole different ball game from this perspective, ain't it? <laughs> Now I'm a cool guy. I'm cool. <laughs> but chill out. Shit. He's a cool guy. I'm a cool guy. Just calm the f down. It ain't me, it's you motherfuckers. <laughs> like what? I'll slow down. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. And our last segment before we get in, you know, we got to do a little warm up as people are coming in. Welcome, everybody. I know I've been gone a couple of days. I apologize. I apologize. And uh, hashtag never forget that we are talking about a childhood thief. Yeah, I stole from the church. Um, then, okay, the first time I remember, I definitely remember stealing was I stole from this lady's purse, a teacher at school. I was on, did I give it back? I probably should go up there right now and give a donation. That's probably what I need to do. It was this teacher at school, and I used to go to, um, what school was this? It was Douglas. I guess I was in House B at Douglas. I was in House A. I, I forgot. But this was, this would have been like 1990. Okay, let me see. Hold on. If I graduated eighth grade in 95, it would have been like 1990. Or something. Girl, that's so long ago. I can't remember shit. 30 years ago. Okay, that's how long ago this shit was. 30 years. So, um, I thought nobody even seen me steal that money out of her purse. I took $20 out of her purse. And I would take the money. I used to go to, like, um, I mean, with that 20 I went to the corner store. I got me some, um, oatmeal cream pies. I got some vanilla ice cream. I got some of them toasted coconut donuts. I got me some tangy, um, cheese chip. That was fat. I was still in the heat. Y'all was fat. We was poor, right? So I remember I stole from the lady, lady purse, and I had got caught. 
And I said, damn, how they catch me? Ain't nobody even seen me going to her purse. But they, they found each other. I had to go to the principal's office every day. It would call my mama. I got my ass toe clean up. So that was the first time. The second time I remember stealing was at the church. The third time, this when I said I better stop this. I think I came to my senses after this, after the third time. After the third time, I said, this is, you know, the third time I got caught. I said, no, I can't do this. It was like more like organized crime. I could have got a RICO charge. I could have had a RICO charge. Let me tell you what happened. I had this job, right? I told y'all this before. I had this job. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crafts. Okay? I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Craft in North Riverside. Third? Third? I know. Girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Craft in North Riverside. Third, third, I know. Girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Craft. It was in North Riverside, right? It was like when you go into North Riverside, you got to go past the Best Buy, and then on the right hand side before you go to the mall, there's the, um, it was Frank's Nursery and Craft, right? And I used to, um, I was on the cash register. Let me tell you what I used to do. So let's say you come and you pay your, you come to the um, register and you do your stuff, right? You be like, okay, I'm going to um, cash out. You know, back then, the credit card, everything was separate. It wasn't the same. So what I used to do is if your bill was like $37.41, right? I would charge your credit card $41 and whatever the cent is, and then take the $10 out the grocery store. I mean, out the cash register, out the grocery store, Lord Jesus, out the cash register, right? So um, I would probably make about between like $80 and $100 doing that a day. Girl, today, to I get somebody down to the accounting department started doing a reconciliation. I thought you just started scamming. You a whole professional. I know, child. Somebody down to the um, the accounting department started saying, "Wait a minute now, store number six seventy two look a little look a little funny on the <laughs> on the P and L." A day, yeah, a day, child. I ain't do it like every day. It would be like I probably do it like. If I, I ain't work, I was a kid. I wasn't working every day. I was only working like specific days. So I would only do it like, let's say if I work three days a week, I would do it like two days a week. I wouldn't do it the whole time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did that. It's one of my fine. I'm not proud of it. Never sounds proud of it. Oh God, we thank God for deliverance. Oh girl, please. I like the only person. So his justification for it was that he was supposedly a, a child, although when we did the math in order for him to work at a retail location in Illinois, for sure, I don't know about other states, everybody's got different regulations, but in Illinois, he would have had to be at the youngest he could be would be 15, and that was only with a work permit. But in order to get a job without a work permit in Illinois, you have to be 16 or older. So if he was in high school, we're going to say he was between 16 to 18 when he did that. That's not a child. That's a teenager. That's old enough to know better. And then um, looking at um, some of the comments, Shay J is saying his fans don't find this alarming. No, no, no. They're laughing. I saw somebody say, I used to do that when I worked at Taco Bell. I'm like, oh, wow. They're proud of it. Again, you got to keep in mind some of the mentalities uh, of the the, the flying monkeys and the hags and the beehivers over there. Some of them are just as toxic and and um, have no morals. Was it one of the uh, videos I used to play for y'all says um, we ain't never had no morals before. What y'all trying to have them now for? It's like wow, <laughs> wow. Um, Nicole Wilson is saying he was a kid, but what's the excuse now? Yeah, again, he wasn't really a well. He was a kid when he was stealing from the church. And selling out of his teacher's purses, ladies at the church purses, all of that. But he wasn't when he was working at Frank's Nursery and Craft. So what was the excuse then? Uh, Dr. T-Dub T -Dub is saying, the third time I got caught, 
I bet he didn't. He did it many times before he got caught. Absolutely. That's you got to watch the words say, and you caught that. You caught that. The, the, the third time I got caught, not the third time he did it, because he probably did it 20 times and got caught only three times. And even he said, I was looking around like, how they see what I do? He was good at his at his thieving by then. Right. The math ain't math. And uh, Sin Sin says, because he's he's claiming that um, he one minute he said, I didn't steal. I stole every I got money every day. Then he said, well, I didn't steal every day. Like I was a, I was working part time. And if I work three days, I only sold two days. That's 90 percent of the time. And that's your version today of the story. I guarantee you he was still in every single day, every day. Uh, closing out this poll, did you know that Darius Crooks has admitted to being a repeated thief as a child and teenager? 72% of you said yes. 28% of you did not know this. That is why I will play this video at the beginning of every video. <laughs> at the beginning of every live, it will get replayed until 100% of the people know this story. Because a lot of people think, for some strange reason, that people are just making up that he is a um, pathological liar and a thief. Uh, a, a career thief. Poll question we're putting out as we move into our first story. Um, did you know that Darius Crooks is trying to become a traveling lifestyle influencer? So some of y'all know who, who follow this. You are aware or watch this content uh, enough. You are aware that we've been covering Darius Crooks and his um, antics for quite a while over here, a couple years actually. And we know now that he has started to adapt his business or uh, scampire model to try to duck and dodge and weave all of the exposure and the truth that is coming down on him. You know, he ended the Dining with Darius Crooks events because those tickets once the tickets weren't ticketing like they used to. He got empty seats. He was having to cancel them secretly, cancel those events. And then not refunding people's money. That's a whole nother story. Um, he he tried the, the kitchen comeback. Was a kitchen, um, was a trap kitchen failure. Kitchen went back on him. He ended up quitting. Then he had the three, uh, two kings and the queen tour that he attempted. He was like, you know what? Okay, this is getting harder and harder for me to do this stuff on just my name. I'm going to drag some other people into it who just don't know no better one clout chasing one just i have no idea what jeremy was on mentally but maybe i can i can use their following to shield me in a way didn't work they didn't even get to the first <laughs> they didn't even get to the first event got canceled on them uh they end up canceling low ticket sales so it's proving to darius crooks that he doesn't have the momentum that he had before with being able to grift people and them not really know who he was and invest in them. So now he's been relegated to his DHAGs, his, his, his cult following. Those are the only people who are still supporting him no matter what. The rest of the world is like, that's a scammer. I see it all the time on social media. He do a random post and you just got all kinds of people talking about he a scammer. Um, so what he always does, because he's a grifter, what is he doing now? He goes to his next grift. So his next grift, you got to pay attention to how she operates, is becoming a lifestyle traveling influencer, meaning he's using the fact that he likes to travel. He's using the fact that he loves to uh, gluttony and tasting, you know, food all over the place and stuffing his 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 um busting out his bariatric seams, all of that. He loves doing that. So now he's going to turn that into a grift. And the thing is, he's is going to introduce him to a newer audience who's not aware of his scamming. Also, in doing this, he's making money from content, not as much uh, needed for people to actually give him money. So it's a way to gain a larger following with, with a whole new audience of people that aren't even used to all of the stuff that's happening. So um Darius Crooks has been putting out these reels um of his 
traveling experiences. And also, before I forget, this hat is a gift uh, from my Amazon store from Shanice. I don't see her in the chat. Yeah, I was kind of trying to wait. But uh, thank you, Shanice, uh, for this hat. And she got me another one from my Amazon uh, store. And so if you want to do that as well, it is linked uh, in the comment area of all of my videos. But thank you so much because um, it was perfect. I was like, ooh, perfect hat for tonight. Uh, okay, so Darius Crooks and his lifestyle, traveling lifestyle comments, uh, content. Come on and fly with me on one of the world's longest routes from Houston to Tokyo with one stop in Taipei. I boarded the flight on EVA Airlines and booked a beautiful first class ticket. Here's how the suite looked with all the bells and the whistles. They give you so many amenities, it's not even funny. There's a menu and then there's a drink menu and then there is another drink menu and there's just so much. They stop by to find out what your preferences are so they can pretty much wait on you hand and foot. You get slippers and champagne and cocktails and sterilized headphones and they even come by and ask you what size you wear because they have pajamas waiting for you. They also come by to verify that if you're asleep, if they can wake you when it's time for meals, that way you don't miss anything. So you tell them yes or you tell them no. They give you so many amenities in your toiletry bag from a face mist to toothpaste, even moisturizer. EVA Airlines is probably the best value you're going to get for any flight going into Asia as the cost of the flight round trip first class is about $6,000 while the competitors are charging close to $21,000. There's just so much more to show you, so be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and share to see more. So he's taking these uh, these flights, and um, he's showing showing you you know people what it's like to fly uh, to these various countries. And uh, here's another one where he I don't know it's kind of the same thing, but this is him. That was him, I think, flying to Japan. This one is here. I wasn't listening, so I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever he said, that's where he was going. Uh, this one here is him flying to Bali from Tokyo, I think, to Bali, where he currently is. So here's this reel, and it leads into what we're doing. Come with me as I fly from Tokyo to Bali. I flew on the 787 Dreamliner and it was an absolutely beautiful aircraft. As you can see, the service is also amazing. They gave me slippers, a blanket, and a pillow to get very comfortable for the evening. And after the wine and beverage menu, I had a chance to choose the meal, which was a beautiful meal. The cabin looks gorgeous, so I started with it. Y'all notice this new voice? <laughs> he got a new voice for every grift. <laughs> This ain't the church lady uh, voice. This ain't no uh, no, no hand clapping, uh, foot stumping church voice. This ain't no preacher voice. This is, I'm such a well-traveled person. And when you sit down in the first class lounge. <laughs> such a scamming grifter cranberry mojito they come and they set the table for you and the first course they gave me it was a pear wrapped in prosciutto with balsamic vinaigrette and it was pretty tasty for the bread i chose with balsamic vinaigrette and it was very pleasing <laughs> it was garlic bread and it was super fresh and amazing for the main course i chose the fish that was in a balsamic sauce it was very for the main course <laughs> very very hot the dessert could have actually been drywall, so I opted for the fresh fruit instead. They come by, clean everything up before it's time to go to bed, and when they wake you up, they give you fresh mints, and then I boarded my second flight. I had an older plane, but we started with champagne and a mojito. They also set the table for me, and they brought me warm nuts as a snack. And then for the appetizer, it was marinated shrimp with bamboo and lime, and it was also pretty tasty. They sure do give you a lot of bread on this airline. Every meal comes with a piece of bread. The entree was a Chinese-style braised pork with rice and vegetables, and I gotta say, it was also tasty. The pork was super tender and delicious. I ate that, fell asleep, and then it was time to get up and get off the plane. Please stay tuned for all of my amazing adventures in Bali. <laughs> oh, we're ready for these amazing adventures in Bali. Oh, trust me, we're, we're so ready, Crooks. We're so ready. Uh, <laughs> the voice. Oh, it's the voice for me. It's the voice for me. Um, couple star questions or comments rather. Um, Chef Jan Maria is saying lifestyle influencer that explains last night's code switching. I think I might. I'm. I don't know if I. Did I, I don't know what. I don't know if I recorded it or not. 
But yes, that's what you're starting to see. So pay attention. This is where she's trying to, she's always trying to rebrand in general. She, she like Madonna, the Madonna of scamming. <laughs> she evolves with her scams. So that's part of it. In part, it is that, but the other piece of it is the exposure. He has no choice. Otherwise his empire will completely crumble because he's being relegated to only being able to scam his dehivers. And that's only so many. The rest of the world ain't, ain't going to support him. So his his goal is to reinvent himself so that he can then get a newer audience and then, you know, throw them in the power to be able to get money from them. He'll figure out a way to create some kind of product line or serve. He's even started talking about like them traveling, uh, going on like food tastings and things like that. So he's going to figure out a way to turn that into revenue. Eventually, he's probably already thought it through. All this stuff is. Uh, it's always. Uh, two steps ahead with the next grift. Uh, says that Diera does does it better when she travels. Yes, I love Diera. I was actually just thinking about Diera uh, today, uh, which is a for those of you who don't know, she's a YouTuber slash influencer. Um, and um, anyway, I was thinking about her content today because I hadn't seen nothing new pop up. Uh, Don Smarg, you can tell Darius is not used to traveling. Yes. So we're about to lead into that next. You can tell he's not used to traveling because he acts as if he's the only person who can and has and does travel. And we're about to get into that next with his current uh, <laughs> videos of his current day actions. But um, I guess we'll lead into it this way. Oh, let me close out this poll. Did you know that Darius Crooks is trying to become a travel li traveling lifestyle influencer? 47% of you actually do know. 53% of you, a little bit more than half, did not know. Yes, that's what that's what y'all in store for. More of what we just watched. More of the oh, <laughs> more of it. And more of the uh influencer, traveling influencer voice where everything is just so amazing and delightful. And these flights are exquisite. <laughs> oh, he's such a grifter. Um, poll question that just went out. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. That was a bit of a typo. I didn't cop, uh, cut the whole thing, copy the whole thing. But it's uh, the question is, have you ever watched one of Darius Crook's live cooking infomercials? Because now, as you saw from that clip, he has flown to Bali there was a there was an earthquake. Was it in Japan or Tokyo? Unfortunately, it missed him. So he has made it to Bali. He was on there this morning. He's he's on there now, I think. But he was on there this morning, um, doing a cooking live. Uh, and when he does these cooking lives, you know the dehivers, flying monkeys, they think that it's just for him to cook for them and demonstrate and and hang out with them. No, these are infomercials. These are infomercials for his uh, crusty pots, pans, crock pots, and dildos, and uh, the cookbooks that, you know. I think people are starting to get them now a little bit because Tammy's in the warehouse. Tammy's the warehouse manager. Darius Crooks ain't the one. They're going out, to, going to print labels like he used to, which lets you know that he, that's why all those problems were happening. He wasn't even in the, he was, he was running the streets. He wasn't in the warehouse. To do those things, and then in the morning, sometimes not every every blue moon, a couple times a week, if that, he would then go ahead and print some labels and then give some instructions to the day laborers. That's why stuff wasn't going out. People was stuff was getting lost and all of that. But anyway, there's a clip here. I'm not sure if um, Joy uh, Joy Pierce uh, Percy Newton Joy Percy Newton. I'm not sure if he created this. Uh, clip here or if he just shared it but I saw this on Facebook and I thought it was uh, entertaining because it goes in line with the narrative of people wonder like why are people saying that Darius Crooks can't cook well there's tons of evidence that points to people being able to say that Darius Crooks can't cook here's one of the earlier videos uh, that demonstrate that I ain't got that's all I got left so I'm gonna add some salt to that. Okay? It's a little adobo. <laughs> I'm gonna sneeze. I might sneeze. <laughs> Put you a little sazon in here. Okay? 
Now just, just go with me. I don't want to hear your mouth. Just go with me, okay? This, I know my grandmother don't use Sazon. This is an adaptation, okay, of grandmama's recipe. Uh, Old Bay. Why? Because they got all the seasoning in there, okay? Okay, throw you a little piece of smoked paprika in here. Put that in there, okay? Ooh, 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 Jesus. Put you a little piece of lemon pepper. Okay. So I'm gonna replay that as I give commentary on this clown show. So the this stuff is from, this would have been had to be like 2021, I think. Um, this is why people were saying he can't cook. Look at how much sodium and MSG and all of that, that stuff is over seasoned. He acting like he doing a whole, like a whole barbecue, uh, a, a whole uh, slab of ribs and, and all the barbecue you can think, think of, like he's seasoning it in a sink or something. And it's a little bit, it's a bowl. So people have been saying, yeah, Goya and everything under the sun. And then he uses the same uses the same season as all the time, right? Uh, the the blood pressure, uh, biz, uh, busy Mac is saying, all of that salt. That um, if you gotta add that much to get you get you some flavor and seasoning, you can't cook. And that's what people have been saying. <laughs> and that ain't the only uh example. That's just the you know the one for what we're talking about right now. That's not the only example. There's tons of examples of Darius Crooks. Uh, sitting there, uh, over-seasoning food. Closing out this poll question, uh, have you ever watched one of Darius Crook's live cooking infomercials? 68% uh, of you have never watched it. Interesting. 32% of you have. They All they are are infomercials. It's him, it's him um, cooking food the way you just saw, if you want to call it cooking, over-seasoning. Uh, and then you, when you think about and as I was watching that clip, because uh, I had seen it before, but I hadn't uh, just seen it today. I was like, just weeks ago, he was slamming black owned restaurants talking about um, their food is not healthy, that you can't get nothing, um, no vegetables, you know, blah, 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 this and that. And yet he then has videos where he's doing this. He's a, such a hypocrite, such a hypocrite. Next poll question is, do you think that Darius Crooks plays with Christianity and the church? Do you think that Darius Crooks makes a mockery? I should have re, uh, reworded that. Makes a mockery and turns the, the church into a joke. If you don't know, this is from, is this from today? I don't know, y'all. I forgot. I got too many. Is this from today? I can't remember. Anyway, here's uh, him cooking live from Bali. I think that's from today or yesterday. But he's cooking and there was a fly that uh, I think he killed. And this was his reaction to that. Wise God, we know. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forever, all of God's children said, amen. Now listen, they ain't got no regular kosher salt around here, okay? You have to eulogize the fly, all right? He had a purpose. It's been fulfilled. So he was eulogizing the fly that was killed with a prayer. So this is sea salt, okay? They use salt from the sea. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I like that, okay? Salt from the sea. Now, girl, we ain't cook nothing. How long I been live? 45 minutes and ain't nothing done. This is gonna be a mess. Okay. Now, what's this? Dry oregano. Put some of that in here. Okay. This is black pepper ground. They put the ground at the end. Why, I don't know, but I'm not gonna question they stuff, okay? So this is black pepper ground. We're gonna put some of that in there, okay? It's really ground black pepper, but whatever. Okay, this is garlic powder. 
Put your attention in and now. Okay, and you know what this is? Onion powder. Baby, they got onion and garlic. It's over for you hoes. It's over. Okay, little piece of onion powder. What's this? Italian seasoning. <laughs> Y'all mad? Y'all mad? They got Italian seasoning down here. What's up? Or, what you call it? Herbs de Provence. This is Dion Be Bubuk. Ground bay leaves. Deal with it. Deal with it. Okay. This is called ground bay leaves. I need you to deal with this. So that's Darius Crooks um, on his uh, cooking infomercial uh, earlier. And uh, the co poll question we're closing out is, do you think that Darius Crooks plays with uh, Christianity, makes a mockery of the church? 96% of you say yes, 4% of you say no. I'm surprised I agree 100% with the 96% of you. 4%, you know, hey, D-hacks, D-hivers, deplorables, those with flying monkey behaviors and the flying monkeys. Welcome. Oh, well, it don't matter. But I was going to say, I forgot to put it on subscriber only. Just make sure when y'all, in order for y'all to comment, y'all got to subscribe. <laughs> um, so that wasn't it. Because y'all saw, oh, we joking, we playing. Oh, I'm playing church as usual. All of that. But you know, he can't be nice for long. <laughs> he can't, he can't, can't help it. Can't be normal for, well, that ain't normal. But y'all know what I'm saying. Can't be decent. <laughs> I don't even know what word to use. For long. The toxicity has to come out. The arrogance has to come out. So here you go, same live stream. They're yet in the United States at their dead end job. They're fat, they have no future, no talent. I don't take criticism from people who are poorer than me. Thank you. Okay, as I was saying, these are the Greek chicken meatballs, okay? So you can do a whole lot of good stuff with, uh, with these, all right? So you have this, this is on page 71. If you need the air fryer, you can grab the air fryer. It's at shopdariuscooks.com. The light is too bright, I know. That's where I am, I'm in Bali, where the sun is shining, okay? That's why I don't care what they're saying on Twitter. They're watching me, I am not watching them, okay? All right, now let's talk about the second dish that we whipped up, and that is going to be the fried shrimp with the corn and the bacon gravy, okay? Yes, we made corn and bacon. Right, who is that said? Uh, Mother of Dragons says, so wait, the, um, the D-Hags are poorer than him. He, ha and I forgot, I think that was uh, Donna Hammond who, not Donna, that wasn't Donna, that was, um, Oh my God, y'all, I'm mixing names up in my head. But um, was saying earlier that he acts as if he's the only one who can trap. Like you, you can tell that he's not used to anything because now that he's been able to travel across the country over, uh, across the world rather, over to Bali and Asia, he acts like no one else but him can do it. And now he's better than everyone because he is able, he's over there now. It's, it speaks of low self-esteem. It speaks of not knowing who you are. It speaks of not truly being a happy uh, and fulfilled human being. It screams it. Here's the rest. Great. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put the beautiful, thick corn and bacon gravy on the bottom. So similar preparations here, all right? I'm gonna take this beautiful fried shrimp and sort of just put it all over the middle, just like this. It smells so good, y'all. It smells so incredibly well. 
Okay? And then I'm just gonna take a little leftover parsley, sprinkle it right on top, and I'm gonna put a little bit of black pepper. This lovely floral uh, black pepper stitch and do that just sort of like right on top. There we go, beautiful. All right, so we have, we made it to the end. Can you believe it? We did it. We literally have two dishes that we made. I didn't know we was gonna make it or not. Right? Two dishes that we have whipped up tremendously. All right. And let me get a fork. Hold on, y'all. All right. You know what time it is. We got the Greek chicken meatballs, page 71, get rich for fry trying. We have the fried shrimp with the corn and bacon gravy. We did this out of page 130 in stories from my grandmother's kitchen. If you need any one of these recipes, you can get it at shopdariuscooks.com. All right, you can get it from there, shopdariuscooks.com. The discount code is the word BALI40. You can say 40% uh, for anything you want, all right? Let me show you the inside of the meatball. Look at that. Oh, God. Look at that. You see that? I know it's a little bright. I'm sorry. If it's too bright, I'm sorry, but this is what happens when the sun shines on you. The sun shines brightly, okay? Now all you gotta do is bow your head and say grace, grace. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, have mercy. See, the cream sauce is good, but the chicken is seasoned so well, and that super moist, that bread, Soaked in the milk, encapsulates the whole thing. It's amazing. No, it literally, and you get a little hint. No, it's not the lights that are too bright. Let me see if I can turn the cameras around and show you what's going on here. Hold on, let me start turning the cameras around and show you. Because we'll deal with this all month, see. I want you to see what's going on. See, you guys are in America. I am in Indonesia. So it's daytime. It's the morning time over here. Okay? So every time... I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm reading comments more than I'm paying attention to him because I did pull this earlier, so I've seen it. But it's just fascinating the mental, the level of mental illness that we're watching here. It's... He thinks it's, it's okay. But then they also, as well, think that it's, it's normal or something. It's very fascinating. Time I cook live for the next month, it's gonna be a beautiful daytime. And if you look at where I am, isn't the villa gorgeous? Huh? Isn't the villa? There's a pool right over there. The villa is gorgeous. He got a whole uh, bunch of crap on the dining room table, including a, uh, in, a commercial extension cord. One of them out, indoor, outdoor extension cords. Just thrown on somebody's nice table. You see how she don't care about nothing? Why is that on the table like that? Okay, so if it's too bright, I'm sorry. But and he done shipped all his uh, little generic cookware and everything over there. I see that little, I think that's the air fryer thing I'm a jig in the back. But this is an indication of how my future is going to be bright. So you actually what I was thinking and y'all yeah, will see in the future. Y'all know I sometimes have these predictions. I think he was in Japan to go to the Alibaba headquarters 
to work on uh, some more uh, Timu style uh, products <laughs> to add to his his line. I really think that's what he's. I was like, why would he stop in Japan? And all he did was eat. And y'all, I've seen it in the groups. Uh, I don't have it tonight here, but all he did was eat at 7-Eleven constantly and go live from the hotel room uh, from 7-Eleven. And then he went on a tour, uh, what was it, a day or two with um, his videographer guy, the other videographer guy uh, who came in and filmed him and the tour guy. But other than that, he was held up between 7-Eleven and that hotel room. So I think he really went there. Uh, is the is the uh, Alibaba or Timu offices <laughs> in Japan? I think that's what he was doing. He was he was down there shopping for some um, some more of his uh, Timu style products. Uh, Chocolate saying he has a new videographer. No, this is the same guy. What's his name, y'all? Some of y'all know the, uh, I'm, his name is escaping me. But anyway, this is the same videographer he had. Uh, he's had this guy for like three or four year, years. This guy only does studio filming because he's older. He has a family, all this other stuff. So um, he hired Corey last summer or something because Corey, he needed someone who could travel with him because he knew he wanted to start uh, doing the food review, the slanderous black owned restaurant food reviews. So funny how once he started doing the white owned uh, establishments and others, uh, all of a sudden his reviews are uh, human like they all of a sudden uh, have some level of compassion and they're promoting and everything is beautiful. And he's finding the more positive things to talk about. Interesting. But with black folks and y'all businesses, they're garbage, y'all horrible. Y'all, Eugene, thank you so much, GR. That's his name. So Eugene is his original. I ain't going to say the original videographer because he's had others. I'm technically the original vid videographer. I was the first ever. Uh, then you move on to the others. He had one in New York, too, who I heard that some of those stories are a little sketchy. I don't know. The New York stories are a little sketchy. It's, he must have really been on a rampage there. Uh, but he did something to the guy who was uh, his videographer then as well. Um Okay, we only got a couple seconds. Let's just get through the end of this one. We have no choice but to deal with it. Huh? Okay. The fried shrimp with the corn and the bacon gravy. Let me see about this gravy. Mmm. 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 That's delicious. Okay. And then the fried shrimp. Oh. Hello. Hello. Perfect. Perfect. Page 71. And page 130. Oh, and the. Uh, I'm typing in the chat uh, uh, in the poll. My God, my brain. Um, just take uh, <laughs> take it as a uh, here we go. Here we go. That's a, do you think because I'm seeing some of y'all comments about his weight and I've been noticing it as well. He's been definitely photoshopping because you'll see like him post a picture and like he looks sl slimmer. Then you see him on camera and you see the rolls and you see the love handle sticking out of the shirts and all of that. But overall. He is definitely um, some losing some weight, and it's starting to look a little um, a little sickly. And so I was questioning. Well, there was actually a comment. Somebody made a comment like them. Uh, that Ozempic shot is uh, they show do do the work or whatever. He said, and so does weight loss surgery. Now I didn't know whether you should take that, and that was his comment response to the person on on his Facebook or something. Now, I didn't know if you should take that as him saying, and also instead of weight loss surgery works as well, or if he was saying the combination of the two, because we know he was not succeeding with just the weight loss surgery alone because he had to re-up and redo it. And on top of that, was still gaining weight, you could tell, because of the way he eats and stuff. So 
But I don't know though. Don't, doesn't the the shots prevent you from really being able to eat? And he's still eating a ton. I don't know y'all, but it's something going on. Uh, Brand Brando Soul says it's something. His body looks all over the place. Yes, yes, yes. It's amazing how you'll see him post a picture that you know is supposed to be present day because he'll repost stuff. So I'm not talking about him posting a picture from uh, four years ago when he had the surgery or five years ago when he had the surgery. I'm talking about stuff, you know, him taking a picture right before he gets on the plane to Japan. But then when he lands in Japan, you look at his body and it don't match the picture from earlier in the day. I, I'm going to pull those together. It's just it's a, a lot of matching all that up. But. That's been, um, yeah, I've noticed that too. I'm like, I think, I think she on the weight loss shots. <laughs> uh, but 87% of you say yes. 13% of you say no. It's something going on. It's something going on. Always something going on with him. Um, then we move over on to the main attraction, the main uh, piece of this story. That is Darius, not Darius, Corey Brims. Corey Brim was originally a part of the Three Kings tour, the Two Queens and a King, Three Queens tour, as some of you call it. And all while all of the chaos has been happening, Corey has been laying low and just putting out his random post where he yelling, <laughs> yelling in his post with all capital letters, every other uh, two or three words. We've read them over there. We've done uh, our reenactment, reenactment. Shay J saying, oh, boy, the Cor Corey voice. Not tonight, friend. Not tonight. I don't, ha I don't have any of that. We got actual Corey himself speaking today. Um, so Corey took to his Facebook and Instagram lives the other, I don't know, whenever, recently. And he felt compelled to show to tell rather his story about his side of what was happening with the Three Kings tour because he said that people were asking him about it and he had been quiet. So I'm going to figure it out. I tried to edit it down, but I'm going to see how much patience I got to get through. <laughs> I did mix in some of the Q&A stuff, but I didn't have enough time to really uh, mash it up the way I really, really wanted to. But a couple of the things in here I do have. But let's look at what Corey Brim has to say. And the poll question I just put out is, have you seen, I'll close it out now. Uh, have you seen the live stream of Corey addressing the Three Kings tour? 97% of you haven't. Nobody, y'all, none of y'all watch him? <laughs> none of y'all? <laughs> oh, poor Corey. Okay, let's... Uh... Hopefully I'm coming in clear and hopefully uh, you guys can comment down below and let me know if I'm coming in okay. Let me know if you can hear me because I might need to change my microphone because I don't know. <laughs> here, let me go on Facebook on here and see if you guys can hear me okay. I want to get into this Three Kings talk, man. And hopefully uh, we can get all this. I don't see any comments coming in yet. So let me check and see if you guys can even hear me. Okay, all right, cool. You can hear me. Cool. All right. Chocolate said, I watched about 20 seconds of it. Chocolate, you would have made it further than I would have had I not needed to pull this for y'all. <laughs> if it wasn't for this, I swear I wouldn't have done this uh, or watched it. Um, the, uh, the thing that's interesting to me, though, <laughs> as I was trying to torture myself to watch it, um, was how it sounded like the beginning of a like NPR or PBS radio show. It's so so mild we're here today yeah i have some of you viewing over on facebook uh hi there to all of you over there on uh, instagram i'm like Corey, could you give us a little more energy man uh this is a it's already putting us to sleep but we already know you're not going to be talking about much over there um help us out brother <laughs> <laughs> and then when i had to listen to it again because i had to edited i was like jesus this is a torture <laughs> all right so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna go live on instagram at the same time and we're just gonna give this a moment to load up thank you guys for uh let me know that you can deborah thank you for letting me know you can hear me lisa thank you for hearing me welcome instagram i know instagram doesn't have a problem coming in 
I'm doing this from my desktop on Facebook, so I'm in my producer's part of my studio or, or, or dashboard on um on. I don't know how many of y'all watch <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Back in the day, I ain't really watched it recently. But remember, they had the skit with the two ladies, and they would be on uh, their public uh, broadcasting radio show. They'd be like, yeah, and I have a cat at home. Her name is Bubbles. And then the other person would be like, Bubbles, that's such an interesting, interesting name. How did you come up with that? Well, I was running a bath of water. Bubble bath, in fact. And Bubbles ran into the bathroom and I was like, hey, Bubbles is a great name for her. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's a very funny story. <laughs> that's the vibe I'm getting for Corey. <laughs> on Facebook. So I want you to, I'm going to talk, but I, I'm going to check back and forth between the two screens. I'm going to wave to you on Instagram over here. And I want to answer some of your questions. So a lot of you have inboxed me and you've asked me what's going on with the Three Kings tour. Now, here's the thing. I haven't really said anything, right? So um, I know that uh, Darius did some videos. I know that Jeremy did some response video videos. And I really haven't said too much uh, in regards to what's happening with the Three Kings tour. Now, I've gained a lot of followers over, well, not necessarily over here on Instagram, but over here on Facebook. I've gained over 20,000 followers in the last uh, 30 to 45 days. And I want to thank everyone for following me, even if you were coming over from Darius or even if you were coming over from Jeremy. I just want to say thank you and, and thank you guys for following me and thank you for being a part of uh, you know what we're building or what we've done and stuff like that. So let me get more to the point. So as you may have learned or saw, the uh, Three Kings tour uh, is not happening. And um, a lot of people are asking, you know, you're asking me, what's up? What's going on? Are you coming to the cities? Um, and I don't, don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> um, uh, then the other thing is I'm not, all the stuff that sort of goes on online, not necessarily drama, right? It's, it's not drama, but all the things that go on online, I'm not that, like, I'm so busy running my business. And it's not that I don't know. It's just that I'm not really looking at all the stuff that's going on online. And I had no idea. I didn't know that um, sort of Darius and Jeremy were having a little uh, tiff or riff or creative things back and forth. And, and I... Darius... Uh so now I feel like, I feel like Corey has been taking notes from Darius Crooks about how to recreate a narrative. Cause how did all of that turn into uh, just a little bit of uh, creative differences? He has been dragging uh, Jeremy from <laughs> from ac uh, across the lands, uh, uh, across the internet, and saying that the guy is everything from a weak bitch to a um, a poor business person. And Corey is like, oh, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I think I heard that they had had some differences out there. Uh, I'm not really sure, though. I haven't really been keeping up. Ain't this supposed to be your uh, former business partners? Ain't this supposed to be cool with them? And you ain't even know none of this was happening? Huh? Corey, quit playing our face. So with him saying whatever he just said, I added this clip because I like to add the truth in. We're not see people trying to send people off. Uh, then the other thing is I'm not all the stuff that sort of goes on online, not necessarily drama, right? It's, it's not drama, but all the things that go on online, I'm not that like I'm so busy running my business. And it's not that I don't know. It's just that I'm not really looking at all the stuff that's going on online. And I had no idea. I didn't know that um, sort of Darius and Jeremy were having a little uh, tiff or riff or a little tiff or a little riff. Would any of you describe what we've been watching play out over the past few weeks with how Darius has been treating Jeremy and the flying monkeys have been treating him as a little tiff, a little riff? Creative things back and forth. A little creative difference. Ain't got nothing to do with creative differences. Fourth. And, and I. Darius, um, do you need me to send the invitation for the Instagram? You can't invite me to. So this is an, is an example of the energy that we saw, we saw building up weeks. I want to say what it was three weeks, maybe even four weeks. No, it was about three weeks before the event was, no, three weeks before it got canceled. We saw this writing on the wall. Corey was living it and missed it. Instagram, can you? Yes, I'm you on can. three kings. You on the three. She on three kings. 
She gonna Listen, send you a request to join. I requested yeah, it already. Send- I requested it already. I heard you, baby. No, I'm telling Jeremy. Oh, okay. I'm like, I say, let me tell you something. Cause you ain't gonna do me like you be doing them people. You ain't gonna be repeating no shit to me. <laughs> Look, I'm like, I requested it. I requested it. I requested it. We see you on them on that dirty camera. And it's not, and even now while I make this video, look, guys, I'm not trying to start anything. So you saw there that Jeremy wasn't one to back down, although he overall did back down to Darius Crook. But he he had that smoke for Darius. Like, I'm not gonna be, you're not gonna treat me like everybody else. In the end, Darius Crooks ended up treating him like he treats everybody else. And worse in some cases. Okay, I didn't title this to be sensationalized, whatever. It's just that people are asking me and they want to know if we're doing something. And I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, and as much as I want to be a part of it, as much as I want to create these cocktails, as much as I want to get out and meet people face to face and see them, I just don't think that it's going to happen. Um, uh, I don't really necessarily have a real reason, right? There's no real, like, there's no blame to be placed. At least from my standpoint, I'm not placing any blame on anybody um i just think there was a, just a matter of differences how we go from darius crooks straight up saying it's jeremy's fault that it got canceled got the whole d hack crew uh over there harassing jeremy saying it's his fault and then Corey, who's behind the scenes is saying well i don't blame anyone but there's more and I think that um, I think we all couldn't kind of come to terms to grip on some things eye to eye. Maybe we rushed it too fast. Maybe we tried to do. I didn't think we did. I mean, I do. Like I have four events today as my company. I have four events today, and it's going to be hundreds of people at each event. So doing an event of 300 people, there are people who said stuff like 300 people is too much, right? There are people who said the price range was too much, but literally, I have there are clients out there that spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars for events. You know, I wasn't, it wasn't out of the scope of realm for me to do. Um, I was ready to do it. Now, I did hear people saying things about like uh, the drinks uh, could have been a little bit better. Uh, it was a Hennessy themed event. You know, um, we, we were thinking about Hennessy. I didn't want to make the drinks too complicated. I would have added a little something to the drinks, but the whole thing for the experience, it would have been the experience. It would have been the mobile, uh, the, the, the sort of coming out seeing everybody interacting with the stuff. Um, and I think that, I know a lot of people did the dining with Darius. I know they did a lot of that. And this wasn't that, um, this was more of a, more of a, like a, a tour, a food tour. Um, maybe not exactly everything that, that they might have gotten with Darius. And, and then just so we, just so we can kind of make everything clear. I have no ill feelings towards Darius. I have no ill feelings towards Jeremy. Look, guys, I'm look. I'm about to be 50 years old, okay? I don't know if that means anything to a lot of people, but as you get older, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, there's not a lot of things that really just get under my skin and irritate me and bother me. It's just uh, as with age, I've just been patient and just and I've seen so much and done so much in my life to know that everything ain't the end. And that doesn't mean that Darius and I can't do something together. That doesn't mean that Jeremy and I can't do something together. And then... I- Sound like somebody uh, right on the middle of that fence crawling across it. So they trying to keep the door open on both sides is what I'm feeling. I want to touch on uh, on one other. There's a few things that I didn't want to touch on. I didn't write. And guys, I have no agenda. Nothing's written down. I'm going live like I always go live. Okay. So don't jump on any of these platforms thinking that I have something that I'm trying to prove. No. Um, what I. What. People are inboxing me is, first, we're going to start with Darius, right? Because that's like the big draw. Everyone wants to talk about Darius. Look, I had an amazing, I had an amazing time with Darius. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I, I was able to um, uh, um, be around him, see how he runs his business, and, uh, and, and see what he does. And then not only that, you know how many followers I gained from Darius? People were inboxing me telling me to be careful. This guy's going to scam you. Darius never asked me for a penny. When we were putting up all the money to make everything happen and paying people, uh, all, the, all the people that went in and, and people that didn't work out, Darius paid those people. I told him, like, I, you know, I don't mind paying. You know, I, I don't mind. But Darius paid everybody. He didn't ask me for one penny, right? Corey's so delusional. Corey's not, uh, Corey's um, willfully ignorant for sure. 
slightly delusional. He he takes scamming like, oh, Darius was going to have you uh, uh, go to dinner and then Darius is going to uh, stiff, stick you with the bill, stiff you with the bill. That ain't what we're talking about, fool. Darius will get into a business deal with you. You you going to be a big catch. He going to get like maybe your book, your cookbook thing, which I doubt will happen. But. The plan where you would have would have got scammed is had the Three Kings tour actually become something and started making money. That's when she was gonna get you. You didn't nothing happened. And you love it. Dares didn't scam me. Everybody talking about he was gonna scam me. He ain't scam me. Nothing happened. He don't want your fifty dollars or a hundred dollars here. He was gonna get tens of thousands out of y'all. Sleep. Just sleepwalking. And then when Jeremy came to the table, like Jeremy didn't know me, uh, uh, so then we became sort of uh, friends or, or, or working together. Jeremy never, not one time did Jeremy say to me, to my face, that, you know, I don't want to work with you. There was no animosity. There was no negative energy uh, with any of us. At least from my part, there was no negative energy. I didn't bring any of that to the table. Jeremy, somebody I, said... I and the volume is uh, adjusted at both because uh, the <laughs> clips were recorded separately. And uh, yeah, it's a whole editing thing I didn't have time to do today. But um, I'm just showing examples of he's like, there was no negative energy. There was no conflict. Uh, hello, sir. We watched it. We watched it unfolding. We were able to predict it based on what we saw with our own eyes and heard with our ears. Hello. I wake up taking edibles. Jeremy, somebody said, how mm -hmm. long are you going to hold when you want to say to Corey? We waiting. What you want to say? Co I Corey. I, I was wondering Corey. what the hell you had at all. He already texted me and said he don't really like you like that. So, and he really texted me trying to get you me to replace you with somebody else. He said this Jeremy, other one. Jeremy, we together forever, baby. You can't it's leave me. We in this for the long haul. It's this other box that make drugs for you. That's what he told me. I'm not, Jeremy, I'm not even worried. It can't be no three can't, teams tour without me because I tear all this shit up. They can't, <laughs> Jeremy. They can't do what I do. They can't do what I do. Baby, you can't have no three kings tour without me. I told y'all the other day when they was on there talking about some where well, y'all can just replace him with somebody else. No, the fuck all you right, can't. Cut them you can't just replace me. <laughs> cut them comments back off on Instagram. We we not we not replacing you. Listen. Darius was like, we're not doing it without him. He called me and said, we ain't doing it without him. There is no three kings without Jeremy. That's I what he said. That. I did. I said that. He did. I think that, pe I think that people really thought that it was going to be like confusion amongst us. Like they were really waiting on us to fall out or something. And it ain't never been no confusion amongst three kings at all. We was waiting on them to fall out. We ain't had to wait long. <laughs> All this tough talk. And it's, <laughs> oh my God. Really waiting on us to fall out or something. And it ain't never been no confusion amongst three kings at all. We've never had any issues at all. Y'all heard that? It'd be y'all puss ass niggas out there to be out there <laughs> hiding behind the keyboards. Huh? Here he go. Here he go. Y'all done got Jerome from Mississippi. <laughs> he do. He be them puss ass niggas that be trying to hide behind the keyboards in these groups and, and talking shit and stuff like that. that. That's what it is. Like, it ain't got nothing to do with the Three Kings. Like, I'm, I'm on board as long as we can do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? I came back and I said that it was never a problem amongst us, but I'm still going to safeguard my house and my family. And you should. So and you should. We as you should. support you on that. We all support you on that. Um, in terms of, I hey, told I, you, I'm not the professional king. Even though we, I don't know if we're going to do the tour, right? Like, who knows what the future holds? But as of right now, I don't see it happening. Um, Corey talking about, I don't know if we're going to do the tour. Like, it's an option at this point. Had you been paying attention, you would know that Darius Crooks has ruined any... Well, not only did Darius Crooks call Jeremy and his man every name in the book and d discredit their name, threw mud on them, uh, disgraced them, all of that. But in addition, he
he said that him and Jeremy ain't never been friends and he wasn't even in the top uh, top two levels of a friendship and he could take it or leave it and he has left it. But you don't know if y'all y'all might do it, uh, maybe. <laughs> this shows that Corey is really on the outside and was always on the outside. It was Darius Crooks, Jeremy, and then Corey on the outside. Just like the little whipping boy. They done had all that kind of fallout, and he don't even know that it went down? Huh? Nobody talking to you? Out of your two business partners, nobody talking to you. I had no idea that they unfriended themselves or blocked each other i look man i'm oblivious right because i'm over here just i'm over here like in rainbows and it's all I'm, I'm i'm drinking more water and minding my business right i think he's trying to sober up i saw some of y'all talking about his uh his his abuse of substances um it seems like he's been trying to sober up is what he was alluding to um i'm uh, amazed at how he can miss all that drama that was going on yet still be on his social media which was attached to the drama because people would go over and be like, hey, what's happening with them? Is the king, the three king? A month later, you talking about you just catching up? I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I had no idea. So I had to hit Jeremy up and I was like, yo, bro, hey, hey, I didn't even know. I seriously didn't know. And But also words of encouragement, man. Hey, man, if you, you ever want to talk, you ever need anything, I'm here. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to not friend you because Darius ain't going to friend you. I developed my own friendship with you. I'm, I'm Darius. Hey, man, enjoy, you know, he's off to Tokyo or Japan, going to Bali. Hey, man, you take all the time you need to get yourself together, man. Unplug, man. Don't worry about this internet. It'll still be here when you get here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, husband, go find us a compound in Bali, right? I'm not going to not be friends with Darius because uh, him and I developed a relationship with, with Darius, right? That's very telling, too. This is this is why you gotta pay attention. I I listen. You gotta listen with your third ear. You got Corey telling us that one of the reasons that Darius Crooks, probably the primary reason that he left, was to get away from America for peace, peace of mind. He had to remove himself. Now he still, you know, dibs and dabs on the internet because that's how he makes his money. So he can't completely escape from that. I mean, he's going live more now <laughs> than he was going. Live in the in the no, that's this. He's going live just as much as he was going live in the states, is what I meant to say. But he's over there to get away from all his failures over here. The constant reminders that his scampire has cracks in the foundation. Corey just told you that during his conversation with Darius Crooks, Darius Crooks said he was going to get away to get peace of mind. And Corey was like, yeah, man, go on over there, get you a break, get you peace of mind. And oh, while you're over there, look for a place for us. Not realizing Darius Crooks ain't his real friend and ain't going to never be his real friend. But that, you know, that's a whole nother story. I'm over here like in rainbows and it's all I'm, I'm, I'm drinking more water and minding my business, right? I had no idea. So I had to hit Jeremy up and I was like, yo, bro, hey, hey, I didn't even know. I seriously didn't know. And but also words of encouragement, man. Hey, man, if you you ever want to talk, you ever need anything, I'm here. I'm not I don't I'm not going to not friend you because Darius ain't going to friend you. I developed my own friendship with you. I'm I'm Darius. Hey, man, enjoy, you know, he's off to Tokyo or Japan going to Bali. Hey, man, you take all the time you need to get yourself together, man. You take all the time you need to get yourself together, man. Is what he Corey said to Darius. You wouldn't say that to someone who's going on vacation just because they're so rich and able to travel the world and live wherever they want to stay and build whatever they want to build. You wouldn't say, well, go on out there and take care of yourself. You wouldn't be saying that. You'd be like, have fun and enjoy it. Not take care of yourself as if you're about to have another mental, another fake mental health breakdown. Unplug, man. Don't worry about this internet. It'll still be here when you get here. You know what I'm saying? Unplug. Don't worry about this internet, man. It'll be here when you get back. Darius Crooks has an inability to unplug from the internet. It is what gives him breath. 
It's like the air we breathe, he breathes air internet. You can give him air and take the internet and she's still gonna unalive, be unalived. She needs it that much. Hey, brother husband, go find us a compound in Bali, right? I'm not gonna not be friends with Darius because uh, him and I developed a relationship with, with Darius, right? I don't know how they may, you know, 100% feel about me. The reality is, and, and look, guys, you don't even know how people are with you in your life. You think your cousin really like you? You know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all, we black. Let's keep it Let's keep it 100, man. You really think your cousin at the family reunion be like, hey, cuz, what's up? We need to hang out sometimes. You don't think they talk about you behind your back? You what sense that make? You, your people don't like you because of your past, brother. <laughs> you and Darius Crooks. <laughs> we don't all have that life. Sorry. You don't think there's words being said about you? Um, and then for, I think, f to, to be honest, what I think, I think when things started to, started to unravel is from the point when people, so we found, first you have to understand that we're looking for venues where all three okay, of us re -listen to that part. completely hate this man. Here we go. Serious. I'm not blaming guys, like I told you. So vehemently angry. So we're looking for spaces that will allow three independent people to come in and do their own thing. That's a hard challenge to find. It's not impossible, but it's a difficult challenge to find. So to have people so vehemently angry with Darius, I'm not blaming guys, like I told you. We're just talking, okay? We're, we're talking. But to have so many people vehemently hate this man, to go to the lengths of calling the venues and giving them one-star reviews like they're going to shut the venue down, is crazy to me. It's insane that people would go to that strength, that length of measure to shut down something that he put together. And then I'm thinking to myself, what does, like, how does, what does this man doing an event how does that shape? How is that moving the needle in your world? It was just, I don't, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Another thing that I think happened is I think Darius is also used to selling out. He's a very high achiever. I think when the ticket sales came back and it's, we're trying to sell out 400 tickets and we only got 200 or 250, I think Darius sees that as like it's not successful. And and and, and I'm not speaking and I'm not speaking for Darius, right? But I think he, I think with him having so much success with him uh catapulting himself into such a high um benchmark anything less than a hundred percent efficient rate is probably failure to him right so he's literally saying as this video is fading to the clip that darius crook's ego i'm translating this for the because <laughs> otherwise we have to listen to it in corey's voice where he's gaslighting us. He's literally saying that Darius Crook's ego was so bruised because this didn't sell out in a couple days that he canceled the event. He's telling you. He gaslighting. But I said, but he's like, yeah, you know, you know, Darius, he's used to operating on a higher level. No, Darius Crooks is used to his griffs returning instantly for him, cash. Not that the quality of anything is great. Not that things are run with excellence. We've seen his online customer service in an IG and Facebook Live. We've seen the hundreds of customer complaints across the board with literally every service and product that he's ever offered from the cookbooks to the cookware to the um, master classes to the dining with Darius uh, stuff, we've seen complaints. The Better Business Bureau has put out a public notice on the dude. So it ain't the business itself that gets ran with this high standard. It is getting the money, getting to the money. Getting to the money. Everybody mad. That's the part that he's used to achieving at. And he saw that this grift, thank you, uh, Explorer, this grift wasn't grifting. That's why he ended it. But then turned it and put it on Jeremy. So the hags 
had somewhere to put their disappointment and toxic energy. They deposited it into Jeremy. Um, hi, everybody. And this is, for those of you who weren't with us when we went through this saga, right, uh, Don Smart said he canceled Chantel's uh, The Kitchen Comeback on the spot. Morning up. People didn't flown there and made arrangements and stuff, and he canceled and walked out on the event. This he canceled, what was it, about a week before, a week and a half before? This is Darius Crooks on the Saturday, the day before Jerome, Jeremy rather, the day before Jeremy actually quit. Darius Crooks was on his IG lies, bringing up to them that the ticket sales were low. Then he ran to his Facebook after he said he was going to talk to his business partners, that being Jeremy and, and Corey. He ran to his Facebook, and that's this uh, that we're listening to. And I chopped it up a little bit. Happy Saturday. This is when he's contemplating canceling it and gaslighting. All right. So um, we can have a little bit of a conversation about the Three Kings on tour. And um, I just come off of Facebook or Instagram, and I guess... In all of our planning for Three Kings on Tour, I guess we got it wrong. Um, there was a lot of work that we have done um, in the last nine months, and nothing's canceled, just FYI, we're not canceling anything. Uh, at least it's not canceled yet. But we have been working on Three Kings on Tour for the last um, nine months, give or take, so a very, very, very long time. And uh, looking at ticket sales, and we go, oh, we thought ticket sales were going to sell a little easier um, than than this, and they are not. So it makes uh, you know makes us sort of go, okay, what did we do? What did we get wrong? What did we not um, get right? What are we not listening to? What are we not hearing? What seems to be um, sort of our issues here, right? And so. We were live on um, Instagram, and I heard quite a few things that I go, oh my gosh, I guess we never considered this or that or the third. So, um, and there, I'll tell you this, there really was no consensus, right? Because you have half say one thing. This gaslighting of half say one thing, then half of y'all, the other half saying this. And then the other half is saying this. And then the other half is saying that. And I'm just confused. How are you saying half from you reading uh, two to three comments? Random comments that you choose to look at and ignoring the rest. He didn't put out no survey. He didn't do no analysis. He didn't poll his multiple platforms of these supposed hundreds of thousands and millions on. How are you going to say what half is doing? When you supposedly got a, a, a million subscribers on, um, a million followers on Facebook, a million on TikTok, 600 something on Instagram, and you're going to say based on reading some comments, what the majority of them, what the consensus is, that is the biggest gaslighting I've seen thus far. But they buy it. They don't use their common sense. How are you saying what half of us did and all you're doing is reading comments in a live stream that the majority, the great, his 5% of his following or less, I if I do the actual math, it's less than 5% that actually watch his live streams. What the hell are you talking about? And they just eat it up. Oh, that's our fault, damn massa. Oh, oh, sorry, Manta. We all over the place. Oh, like what? Half say something that cancels that out, right? Half will come back and say something else. And this is called creating the narrative. He comes on, creates this illusion of caring, illusion of, oh, I'm listening to y'all read a couple comments, 
give the, the sassy crook voice. And then whatever result he want in the end is what he says. And then he said, well, that's based on what I was hearing from y'all. No, girl, it's based on what you wanted to do in the first place. And you were about to cancel. And Jeremy beat you to the punch that next morning when he couldn't take all the chaos. Lord, I wish Jeremy had waited. Lord, Jeremy, had you consulted me, I would have told you to wait. Wait. She going to cancel on y'all. Wait. Turn off the social media. Don't say nothing. She going to blame you if you quit. Even when she cancels, she's going to blame you. But that, at least at least let her not have evidence. <laughs> and then it happened. So it just, it sort of gets itself canceled out. So we never could really come to a conclusion, right? That never once crossed our minds. In fact, I kept saying I didn't want it to be like dining with Darius because I kept saying it over and over again. Oh, I forgot. So that was part of the, the narrative, twisting the narrative with this, was that Darius Crooks turned it to the reason, reason that the Three Kings tour didn't sell out as quickly as he wanted. Because the truth is, they again, Jeremy and Corey were happy with them having, they would have had like 200 people or something. Darius Crooks in, really wanted them to have closer to 400 people. So when they said they had seating for 300, they were going to open up another batch of tickets. Darius Crooks, in his mind, thought, that's what was going to happen. And when he realized we can't even sell out the tickets we got to open up that new batch of tickets, he was like, this ain't going to be enough money for me to, to run away with. And he probably, I saw somebody in the comments saying the reason he was paying for everything up front was because he was probably going to wait until that first uh, event, cut every corner he could, make sure there's some level of a profit that was coming out of it. And then he was going to tell them, y'all can't get this profit because y'all ain't paid for all this other stuff. Scammer. Don't want to do down and down with Darius Cooks, but it doesn't. So oh, and that's what I was going to say too. So his twisting of the narrative is now the event itself didn't fail because of the horrible menu, the horrible location, the lack of planning, uh, the fact that it was less than a month uh, away from them releasing tickets, expecting people to book flights and all and hotel stays and all of that. None of that was the problem. The problem was his flying monkeys messed up on the menu because they didn't tell him. Uh, they agreed to the menu per him. They agreed to the menu, but when he actually put the menu out, they didn't like it, which makes no sense whatsoever. And then the other part was that Jer Jeremy quit. And then, oh, the other piece is the, him twisting the narrative is, oh, y'all just so used to dining with Darius Crook because I did such an amazing job and I set the bar so high with it. So it's just y'all just want me. Y'all just don't want no, y'all don't want nobody else. Y'all don't want me to do no events with nobody else. Y'all just want me. What? The menu was horrible. The, what you didn't see in the comments from any comment I was watching, reading, what you never saw was anybody say, well, we hate Corey. We hate Jeremy. If you had been by yourself, I would have bought a ticket. That, nobody was saying that until he started putting that narrative out there. Then the flying Myers started with that narrative. Well, I prefer it's just you. I only, come, I only was coming to see you. I only followed them because of you. After he created that narrative. Here's like where the conclusion, well, it's not really a conclusion yet, but I'm just like, it doesn't seem like you want it. It just, it doesn't seem like you, you want this. And I'm, this is me coming off of eight years of doing Dining with Darius Cooks, wanting to put together um, this idea of a, of a. Because it didn't sell out instantly. I think the tickets, by the time he put this, I'll have to look back to the calendar. But I want to say what the tickets were out one week. Literally about a week, the tickets were out. And he gets on, y'all don't really want it. What? Because <laughs> her ego was bruised. Because he's used to being able to tout, I just made a, a million dollars in 10 minutes. All these tickets sold out, holding his phone up and stuff. Couldn't do it. And people were tracking it, the failure of it. His ego was bruised. 
party of an idea, it does not seem like you guys are interested at all. At all. It seems like we, I have done such a fantastic job of cementing dining with Darius Cooks in your brain that that's what you want. That's all you can see. You know, we had Hennessy in uh, South you can see her making it up as she goes, tongue popping and everything. Oh, it's because Darius, dining with Darius Crooks was so successful. And I just got y'all locked in on that. Are you ignoring the fact that people keep saying the menu was atrocious for the three kings? That the distance was a problem? It was no, not even uh, Chicago adjacent, even though you were saying it was Chicago. It was an hour outside of Chicago. You're ignoring all that. Now it's, oh, because I did such an amazing job with dining with Darius Cook. Can't help it. His ego. He had to stroke his ego in some way. The Three Kings was a failure. He had to figure out a way to stroke his ego by saying, well, the only reason this was a failure is because y'all love me by myself so much and what I did with my other event. Even though that wasn't selling out either. You was canceling those events. But facts don't matter here with Darius Crooks. Oh, forget the facts. We don't need to do that. We create a narrative based on what we're feeling in the moment. Addressing and dining with Darius Cooks. Did you know that people are asking me to please bottle this salad dressing up? Right? Um, so we heard. So his thing about the Hennessy and people complaining about the Hennessy laden uh, menu is that why y'all complaining about the Hennessy? Y'all got problems with Hennessy now, but y'all didn't have problems with it when I had it in the dressing and people was asking me to bottle it up. He probably got that from one or two people out of eight years of doing it. And now it's a, and y'all was drinking the Hennessy dressing. Well, the difference is having it as a condiment and having it as the meal, the dessert and the drink is a whole different animal. Somebody, uh, I saw it was a picture too, but somebody in the comment uh, a couple lives ago said it, the event, the meal basically was a bottle of Hennessy with food on the side. But now he's trying to say, because he did a dressing that some people enjoy that has some Hennessy in it. Well, why y'all complain about an entire menu full of Hennessy? What? That don't even make sense. Again, but it don't matter when he's creating the narrative location then we heard menu half of y'all say oh the menu's fantastic the menu's great yeah see how he keep using this half he just picked it out the sky where'd you get this half from show us the analytics show it to us where was the poll i didn't get to take the poll i didn't see no uh, flying monkeys flying past me to go take the poll where is the poll where's the survey I didn't see a survey monkey email going out for the flying monkeys. Where is the flying monkey survey? Where you get this half from? Half of y'all said, yeah, the menu's horrible. I don't like it. I'm not coming because of the menu, right? Half of y'all said, Hennessy is the issue. Half of y'all said, oh, Darius, this is pretty. It irks me as a number person, as a numbers person. And y'all know I'm, I'm always doing polls over here because I, I I like to get accurate uh, information. This is bothering me. Where is this half coming from? <laughs> you read five comments while we was on there. Where is this half of people saying whatever? From you reading the comments? Are you kidding me? cool we like the idea right <laughs> we thought by right brie brie crutch I'm, I'm gonna find your comment in a minute <laughs> by trying to centralize a brand we could use that in future attempts to get sponsorship that's what we thought so that was the idea there but clearly that you don't like that either right then it was the timing of the evening right half of you said oh it's short notice it's, i can't do it it's not enough time and then half of you said oh it's plenty of time i'll, I'll be there i got my ticket got my flight we're, we're coming we'll be there um so that's i mean that's like what we've been hearing right it's it is you know half of you say the price isn't a problem half of you say the price is oh i think one thing i can come come to a conclusion of is this 
it seems like you have dining with Darius Cooks etched in your mind. And what I hear you saying is that you get more food at dining with Darius Cooks for the same price it would cost for Three Kings. And this is what I'm hearing, right? I don't, don't get mad at me. Don't go, oh, this sounds crazy. But this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that you get more bang for your buck at dining with Darius Cooks and it's seven courses and you feel like that's a lot compared to doing what we're doing for the Three Kings, right? So am I missing um, anything, right? So the Hennessy theme and what you're offering for the money um, does not add up to the stuck to the normal seven course menu and just brought new dishes. Yep, yep, heard that. Uh, definitely heard that, definitely heard that, boy. I definitely hear you on that. I expect more than chicken on a stick even for logi if it's for logistics. Got it. <laughs> sometimes the sometimes the D haggers are are they get a little bold and they honest. <laughs> sometimes. It's like uh, I expect more than chicken on a stick. But no, it's cause, you know, it's cause Jeremy was there and cause Corey was there. Not the atrocious menu. An overpriced menu. Overpriced event uh, uh, period. Got it. What you're hearing about dining with Darius Cooks is true. Yep. 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 That's what I think I'm hearing. And and I don't, I, that never once crossed our mind. Okay. Got it. Cool. Good. 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 Um, thank you again for all of your lovely feedback. I will take this back to the team. The team, which would be Corey and Jeremy, who told him they didn't feel like he needed to do this. They have both in separate lives now, their own personal live streams, said that neither one of them felt like this was a problem. Neither one of them. And even to this day, they both feel felt like, except for Jeremy quick because of the chaos and the toxicity. But other than that, the event itself, they were both okay with. This is Crooks creating this. Because her ego was bruised because it didn't sell out in a week or less. Really less. He wanted to brag about it. He wanted to get online doing one of his cooking live infomercials and brag how quickly it sold out and he couldn't do it. And instead, he got drugged by Hennessy, the company who said they had never heard of melted Brussels sprouts. It's got over a million views on Twitter or X. His feelings was hurt. Mama! Mama! That's why. She needs to tell the truth and shame the devil, but she don't want to hurt her father's feelings, so she won't shame her father the devil. And I will determine, well, we as a team will need to sit and figure out what we do, how we do it, what we need to do. Um, and I don't even know where we're starting. I just know that this data and this feedback from both Instagram and Facebook, uh, the data and the feedback are very important. So I wanted to grab. What data? <laughs> from comments? <laughs> from select Comments, data, that's not data. That's narrative creating, but that is not data. That is not data. Gaslighting, what data? The fact that you knew you wanted to cancel it and you were creating all these theatrics around it, act, act one, scene one, <laughs> act two, scene two, act three. <laughs> and before you could get to act three, Jeremy quit on it. Jeremy, you move too fast, Jeremy. Now it's Jeremy's fault. Act three, he rewrote the whole script. It became Jeremy's fault. That from you, um, take that back to the team so that we could have some more internal leadership discussions. And 
some more internal leadership discussion discussion it sounds like if the leader the leadership team was in fact responsible for this and and had and, and it was a democracy and everyone truly had a voice in this sounds like when you vote two out of the three were okay with continuing however it did not continue why because Darius Crooks didn't want it to continue because his ego was bruised. Everybody, they was making TikToks about the menu. Y'all remember the TikTok video about the menu? I'll pull it up in a minute. Y'all remember it? Figure out what is the best way to move forward. The event is scheduled for March the 15th. You can go to Three Kings on Tour to get tickets. Three, the number three, uh, Kings on Tour to get tickets. So, all right, I'll keep y'all posted. Let me um get to some work. Love you. Bye. What is he keeping them posted on? If the event was just going to continue, keep buying the tickets. What I got to keep you posted on? Because I might cancel on y'all. But now it's Jeremy's fault. Jeremy the reason. And I, I completely get that. I, under, I understand it as an entrepreneur. I understand it as someone who started this business. But I also said it was like Darius, man. We still got two hundred people that like bought tickets, and like you say, like we don't have to, we don't have to cancel on these people. We, have, you know, it could organically grow. Did y'all miss that? So I'm out here just laying out the receipts. I, I don't have to create a narrative. I just play what's here. Bye. And I, I completely get that. I, under, I understand it as an entrepreneur. I understand it as someone who started this business. But I also said it was like Darius, man. We still got two hundred people that like bought tickets, and like you say, like we don't have to, we don't have to cancel on these people. We, we don't have to cancel. We already got two hundred, at least two hundred. We got people who want to come. We don't have to cancel on these people. That's from, uh, from um, Corey. Let's see what Jeremy had to say about it. My day started and allowed any more of my energy to be consumed by um all of this stuff that's going on um so on yesterday um there was a live about the three kings basically uh stating like i guess why tickets um weren't moving as fast as um uh some would have liked um personally I mean, I feel like the tickets were selling and that they were, I mean, people have already, you know, done what they needed to do to make arrangements to come and all of it. And, um, you know, I just, I, I don't, I'm, I don't really do all of this. I don't really do the whole getting on social media and explaining my decisions about stuff or whatever need to be done or that's just not me. Like my, my whole thing is I tell people all the time, y'all, I just make cakes. So it's not like I'm, I'm not out here trying to solve world hunger. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a controversial person. There is no controversy that surrounds me or my brand or anything that I do. Um, but ever since I have gotten started with this project, there has been negativity. There has been harassment. People have harassed me. They have harassed my husband. Okay, I ain't want to get too deep. Uh, calm down, Jeremy. Calm down. We ain't getting into all that. But as you see, Jeremy is saying the same thing that Corey is saying. Neither Now, I was telling y'all that before, but now I got them both in their own videos saying the same thing. Neither one of them had a problem with the low ticket sales. They felt like it was going to be fine at the end of the day. They knew it was the first event. They knew they were growing, et cetera, et cetera. Darius Crooks couldn't take it. Probably also started thinking about the fact that he was going to have to share. And she couldn't take all that. Keep saying she is the author of confusion. Everybody want to ignore it and allow her to create this new narrative when we got the actual receipts of what happened. We have them. We saw it playing out. We saw what happened. And now we got the, the post 
the other two people telling us from their perspectives what happened. And neither one of them thought that it should be canceled because of low ticket sales. Jeremy left because of the drama, because somebody creating a whole thing around low ticket sales when he like, it's not a big deal. We'll be okay. Yeah, you know, let's get back, get back to NPR, um, Corey. Be growth. But, you know, we, we kind of knew going in that the first event wasn't going to be the money making event, right? We knew that we would have to go in and this, anybody who does business, it takes a lot to get these things off the ground. If you've ever done any productions, if you've ever done, if you've ever been a part of anything like this, you may not see a return on your investment. It may take four or five events. You, so we planned 15. You may not get a return on your money until project three or project two or project four. You don't know that until you sell those tickets, until you have boots on the ground. So I think that may have been something that uh, kind of set back with him. And then with uh, Jeremy, and I'm not speaking for him either, but I know that this is a this would be a huge undertaking for him because he has what he has going on, his uh, baking, you know, he's doing his, um, his culinary and his baking um, uh, in Florida. It would be a, a huge lift for him to excuse me, leave Florida, go to, to travel to all these different cities, right? And then have to execute on such a high level, all the while still having customers and clients that you still have to, we, like we still have businesses that we have to run. We st I, I still have a business that I have to run. So Jeremy would have to be in these different cities, still maintaining the operations. Okay, I'm fast forwarding a little bit because there's a couple other little pieces in here. Sometimes when I'm editing, I feel like I want to keep stuff. And then by the time we get to the show, I'm like, I should have cut this out. <laughs> it's one of those moments. You made, oh, you made a something leading into this. Thing. Things to this man. If you can't, if you can't take it, don't dish it. Guys, y'all, man, people are cruel. <laughs> look, look, people are cruel. Y'all are saying, you were saying evil, mean things to this man. So this was uh, the comments that Corey has been getting about how mean and toxic that Jeremy can be. Corey is defending Jeremy by saying that Jeremy is responding to people who are being mean and toxic. I have not seen, I've seen his responses be way, like Darius level, rants where I'm like, wow, it didn't require all that. I've also seen Jeremy say some things that I didn't think were necessarily called for and being disrespectful to people who are viewing, et cetera, et cetera. On top of that, and I don't watch his stuff. I'm talking about connected to the kitchen comeback and this uh, Four Queens fiasco. I ain't seen his personal stuff. I don't even watch none of that. I've heard, though, from the many comments and stuff I get from people like, no, nah, Vail, he was, uh-uh, Jeremy, a mess over there, and he he could dish it, but he can't take it, you know, blah, 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 all of that. So this is what um, Corey's responding to, and then I'm just showing a clip of what we were watching. When it didn't look like it was called for, for Jeremy to be speaking to people the way he was, through a Q&A when they were trying... <laughs> Let's talk about the Q&A and how even that was a failure because that was meant to promote the event. And all it did, in my opinion, I wasn't interested in going, but I'm saying for anyone who might have been interested in going, all it did was show the chaos and show all the reasons you shouldn't go. They're unprofessional. They, um, you got a drunk on the team. <laughs> You got, they ain't got uh, nothing is planned. They ain't got it figured out. Darius Crooks thinks that his name alone is going to carry him to uh, sales heaven. And that's all he care about. That's all you saw. Darius Crooks talking about some, what, when, when the question was asked, what should you expect? I wish I had kept that in there. What should you expect from this event? Well, you know, it's going to be full of surprises. You're not really going to know what you're going to get. You're going to walk in and you might have uh, your drink first. You might have dessert first. You might have your entree first. Then you go around and you might have your, 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 your drink next. And then maybe your dessert. And it's like, what? <laughs> huh? Gift bags? Y'all talking about some gift bags coming in the mail? Huh? All of that. Craziness. But this is uh, an example of what Corey, not Corey, Jeremy 
was doing during the Q&A. How do you think he's supposed to respond? Again, I'm not sitting up here trying to, you know, people say stuff like, you know, uh, uh, what about your brother husband? I don't see you talking about your guys. I'm not clout chasing Darius. Nothing. That's what I feel like I've read. Is that enough? Oh, my bad. This is actually uh, proof of uh, one of <laughs> the proofs of Corey clout chasing Darius Crooks. I wish I had time to really edit this because, you know, there were many other times during that live for those of y'all who watched it with us. I hope so. I hope that's enough. I hope me coming with my unique Southern point of view with a little bit of a creative edge is enough for the people to be like, you know what? This is nice. I like this. You know the thing? That line always cracks me up. My unique Southern point of view. Negro, you from the west side of Chicago. What the hell are you talking about your Southern point of view? What? You, you, you've you admitted in articles that your grandmama didn't even let you cook in the kitchen. You had to sit there and keep your uh, thieving, scamming ass quiet. Because you probably had been stealing in purses every day, all day, and she would sit you in a corner. <laughs> she ain't even let you cook with her. But you got a Southern point of view. What? Blind ass. You got it from Paula Dean. That's the only southern point of view you got. What you stole from her from watching the Food Network. No, there's the other day you made you made a fried catfish and collard greens from scratch. Yeah, I always you went scratch. live. Everything from scratch. I don't I don't do nothing that's not from and, scratch. And that's what I think. I, I know a lot of people watch. He don't want to do I mean it's the gaslight for me. <laughs> Oh my God! If I had if I had the bandwidth, I would just be dialing up stuff left and right. He's talking about he he uh, only makes everything from scratch. You know how many videos we got out here and clips of him um, <laughs> using Popeye's chicken to make chicken and gravy. He bought Popeye's chicken, made the gravy, and put Popeye's chicken out the box into the pan with the gravy. What? She bought her vegetables frozen, already diced. Huh? At Chantel's kitchen comeback, she bought pre-boiled uh, hard-boiled eggs. She's a gaslighter. She's a... <laughs> Recreating the narrative. Now she make everything from scratch. Girl, you want to spend time boiling eggs. What are you talking about? have gone to your dining with Darius. That's the thing about, and as as someone, I, like I haven't personally known you that long. And, I, and I'm not saying this because your food is good. Your food is good. It's hard to, like you hard pressed to find somebody that can make food that looks good, tastes good, like from A to Z. A to Z. Well, you know, I try. I no, really, no, you don't. I really do try. You know you, what I'm you, saying? That collard green was this big that one you peeled off the other night. Baby, no, somebody no. said Corey said catfish from scratch. <laughs> you know what it was? It was a um collard green pesto I made. Corey brown nosing and clout chasing so hard that his partners in this business not only were the people in the comments laughing at him but his own partners cracking up laughing at him but he's talking about he don't be clout chasing crooks okay and this is one one sample i ain't have time to pull the other clips into this from that live alone not to mention the the post that we've read <laughs> we have a whole segment on the clout chasing alone What y'all laughing at? What I miss? You know, no, nah, they said the catfish from scratch. Y'all can say whatever you want. There's people out here, they got they got they got fake flour, fried too hard, no seasoning. He did that thing like your grandmother did. Oh am no. I, am I not supposed to? Hey, I tell you, they can clown the joke all they want. That 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 thing looked official. I'm not clout chasing Jeremy. I have my own viable business that I do every day. I haven't stopped doing my business. I've always gone live. I, you know, I may do it or I don't necessarily I do it on my phone just today. I'm going live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. I very rarely go go live to get on Instagram at all, if any time. But the takeaway from I'll come back to some other stuff. The takeaway from this is being around those two gentlemen, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about my business. 
I learned about I learned a lot about myself. And in life, this isn't the first time where I've been faced with obstacles. This isn't the first time when I've been faced with adversities. This isn't the first time where there was a whole t man. There were there were three in depth uh, TikToks <laughs> that these people pulled up my past. They pulled up my child support that I have paid off, right? But you can't. But in the in the court of public opinion, right? In the court of public opinion. When I, I come on Insta, Instagram, you may not know this about me, but on Facebook and some of my new followers on Facebook, I don't hide from my past. I made mistakes in my life. I did things wrong. I did things wrong and I atoned for the things that I did wrong. Now, if you run my name through a public whatever, yeah, you're going to see some stuff that I did. I ain't jaywalked in, in 10 years, right? So, so anyway, this, this is not necessarily about me. Um, over here on Instagram, BB Smith is saying he's never the problem. Never. I'm so tired of him. Speaking of Darius Crooks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We all agree. <laughs> Majority of us, except for the flying monkeys up in here. So they, so, so they were building this narrative of, of like, so there, so there was one video that was building this narrative of like, as if I needed this tour, I needed to be with Darius to get this money. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm already getting money. Now I'm not getting Darius money. You know what I'm saying? I ain't making a million dollars a month, but I'm doing pretty good with what I'm doing. And uh, and, and Jeremy. Darius Crooks ain't making a million dollars a month either. <laughs> now, if you want to believe what he tells people, then you might buy into that narrative. But even the way he operates, he's not bringing in a million dollars uh, a, a month. But this somehow Corey got that in his, in his brain because he saw how much Darius had grifted from one of his drama campaigns. Um, I think the one with um, um, with Darnell, uh, AKA what they call, uh, call him ghost boy. Uh, he did that discount code. And I think that was during the month while they were working on three Kings or whatever. Uh, so he saw that and whatever else he saw. And he's like, Oh, Darius makes a million dollars a month. No, he do not. That would make him, he'd be making, uh, over, over 10 million a year. Darius Chris does not make that kind of money. It's flatline. Now he ain't making nothing. Cause he ain't created no drama right now. That's the part that Corey don't see. But the other thing that uh, I noticed with this, and it reminded me of Chantel and so many others who connect themselves with Darius Crooks. They are willfully ignorant of what he is doing, what people are accusing him of. They, they purposefully keep themselves ignorant so they don't have to confront the truth. And then they act like they don't understand why, pe why people are exposing him and calling him out. And they paint it as if Darius Crooks is being victimized by people who are just jealous because at the end of the day, they benefit from it in some way, which he speaks to. He gained some knowledge of how to manipulate social media. He talks about he learned about equipment, leveling up his equipment. He's learned some other business strategies from Darius Crooks. And what he was hoping and still is hoping is that he can make money from Darius Crooks uh, still in some way. He's doing pretty good with what he's doing. This was not some money from me. It was not some money grab from Jeremy. I, I'm not trying to speak for him, but I didn't feel like it was a money grab. The reason I don't say it was a money grab for Darius is because I was with him when we were in our meetings and this dude was making $200,000 in a weekend. I saw, I saw him make $500,000. These are two separate different, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think it was a money grab for him. And not only that, he's paying. This is where the delusion of Corey steps in, because if it was not about money, why would he even be talking about canceling? Why would you guys have even had to have that conversation with him about him wanting to cancel the Three Kings event due to low ticket sales? If it wasn't a cash grab for him, if it wasn't a cash grab for Darius Crooks, he would have said, oh, it's no problem that the tickets aren't selling out immediately. Because this is about me and us building a business and me spending time or us spending time with our followers and our supporters. That would have been the mentality around a person who is not there for a cash grab. However, the mentality of a person who's there for a cash grab is, oh, F this. I'm going to move on. This ain't making this ain't making money quick enough and ain't looking like it's going to make the money I want to make. I'm going to move on to the other thing that looks like it's about to make me more money, a.k.a 
uh, now I'm a lifestyle, a traveling lifestyle influencer. And oh, I'm sorry. And opening up a restaurant, mainly open up up a restaurant in Bali. And he already talking about opening three or four of those, four or five of those. And on top of that, he got Tommy, who is a cook who want to open up one cooking school. He telling Tommy, oh, no, you finna open three. I'm going I'm to give you the seed money. Found his next cash grab get, grift. Corey just blind. Ain't paying attention to none of that. He literally canceled due to low ticket sales. Darius Crooks made all this hubbub about low ticket sales, but you don't think it's a cash grab. You think it's only because he's used to succeeding right away. Girl, <laughs> the delusion. Aim for everything in the in the production side of what we're doing. So I don't think it was a money grab um, from and 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 an, another thing that a lot of people do is a lot of people play Monday morning quarterback. A lot of people sit back and they start speculating or they start breaking down. They start trying to figure out, and in their minds, they see something that it that isn't even there that becomes a reality to them. So they see me in a certain way. They see Darius in a certain way. They see uh, Jeremy in a certain way. And that's the reality of that they have. Even though I'm not projecting anything, I don't think Darius is, I don't think Jeremy was projecting anything. But they, but you get it, you get it figured out in your mind that this person is this way. And no matter what they do or how many, it doesn't matter how many times, it doesn't matter how many truckloads of food I've given away completely for free. It doesn't matter how many people I've clothed, fed, loaned money to, helped other businesses, given jobs to, not trying to stroke my ego. I don't need to do that. But the, 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 that doesn't matter. What matters is I was trying to scam somebody, right? <laughs> what matters is I was trying to get this money. We would just, you know, da 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 da. Then I saw another. There was another two-hour-long video where this guy. I don't, guys, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, I am out the loop. Okay, I don't know what's going. Do y'all think he's talking about us over here? Y'all think he's talking about Vel B? He said there's another guy, and there was a two-hour-long video. Y'all think he's talking about Vel B? <laughs> I just put the poll out there. Let me know if y'all think he's talking about us. I'll be right back. The, 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 that doesn't matter. What matters is I was trying to scam somebody, right? <laughs> what matters is I was trying to get this money. We would just, you know, da, 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 da. Then I saw another, there was another two hour long video where this guy, I don't, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I'm out the loop, okay? I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know how people have this much time and energy and effort to organize these groups about Darius. Like there's, I don't even know how many groups there are out there that are that are, that have thousands of people that are in these groups forced against this man, right? And to see there was a two hour long video that went, they went line by line, step by step, everything that he did. I'm like, who watches, if you don't like this person, I, I'm, just, I'm just asking a question, okay? If you don't like this person, how do you watch every single move that he makes? What what is it that he's doing that you're so enthralled that you have to watch every single move that he makes and then you have to comment on that move that he makes? I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It I I don't know I don't know I don't know how you get up in the morning and that motivates you that moves you to go and try to tear this man down. Like I told y'all guys, guys, I'm fine. I saw people coming for me for TikTok. I saw them calling me names. You know, I had the thing with, you know, be, you know, people thought, I, look, I'm not even going to go into that because I, I walk a tight line on the, on the community guidelines on these. So his narrative is I stay blind with blinders on. I'm telling you guys, I don't know what's happening. But then when I see people exposing Darius Crooks, I choose not to actually see if the, anything is legitimate about it because I'm getting something out of this. I'm getting raising my business, potentially going to make some money. So whatever else is going on, whatever harm he's created, the fact that he's a scammer or not, no, nah, I want to see none of that. But then I'm going to point fingers at the people who are exposing the person and act like they just bored, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But he's basically listening to Darius Crooks' narrative and because there's a possible benefit and he'll take whatever he can get from it, just like Chantel. Remember, at the end of this, those of uh, you who watched our um, 
we did the little uh, reaction video of her interview after the whole fiasco of the Chantel, uh, the kitchen comeback. What Chantel say? She still would work with Darius Crooks. She got some uh, followers from it. It got her business some attention. They don't care. There's no morality to this. And I see that time and time and time again with people who interact with Darius Crooks. It's really a P. Diddy syndrome. Look at how many people was next to P. Diddy, hanging out with him up until recently. Knowing all that he'd been up to for decades. But because they got the proximity, the closeness to wealth and uh, celebrity, which could possibly, hopefully in their minds, rub off on them and they get a little bit of that. I don't see none of that other stuff. They just haters until they're not. Until they're witnesses on a witness stand <laughs> in a federal trial. Right now, they're just haters. Everybody's a hater. I spend two hours talking about, and we're going to two and a half now. We're going to wrap this up at two and a half. Two hour videos just because I'm bored, just because I ain't got nothing else to do. That's why I do this. Oh, I'm just so miserable that I just picked some random fat boy stuck in a bariatric body, roach body built, ozempic addicted uh, snorter because I'm bored. Foolishness. Corey, do you think I'm bored? As bored as we are from listening to your live with your newly purchased podcast equipment, trying to become a motivational speaker of sorts. Is that what you think? Do you think that I'm over here just trying to do what you're doing? Boring the people to death. Talking random-ish with no notes, no receipts, no bullets. Gaslighting people. Corey, is that what you think I'm over here doing? You would be wrong, sir. You would be just as delusional as you look as I pop up every receipt of the Q&A where you guys told on yourself. Good night, all. So I have to be careful of what I say, right? But but uh, there were some people accusing me of stuff, and I'm just like, how did you even come to that conclusion that I was even like that? I think Brock is here. I think Brock's here. Okay, then I'm going to fast, because I'm bored. I'm truly bored. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward to the part where he talks about his past a little bit, because I know there was some confusion with his past, but also some people talked about it. He explains it. I'm at least, <clears throat> at the very least, I'm going to uh, allow Corey to be heard uh, as he explains his past run-ins with the law, child support, being a deadbeat father, and other mistakes that he's made in his life. Hopefully I can find If it. I'm going into it with this optimism of copying what they're doing, I'm watching. I got to see, I got to be, I can't say those kind of words. I can't say those kind of words. I know that I'm being successful. You are, I don't care which platform you're watching me on. There is no way in the world you're going to sit here and tell me that any, any, anything that you do, any passion that you have that created a book called never going to never give up. Okay. I think this is about it. I hope so. Jesus. <laughs> you're going, you're going, you're going to expire. <laughs> it's not going to. Oh, here we go. And I, I've had man, look, I even before I started Sugar Rim Bar, I had haters. Right? What, what are you? What are, are you waiting for me to fall? Are you waiting for me to fail? Well, you might as well just if you holding your breath on that, you going, you going, you going to expire. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I have a whole book. I got a whole book called Never Give Up. <laughs> Do you think the author that created a book called Never Going to Never Give Up is going to give up? I started this from nothing. I had nothing. No one gave me anything. I bootstrapped myself up from the from the mud 
to build a, a, six, a seven figure business. They ain't even a six anymore. I'm trying to be an eight figure business. I, I created this thing. You said it was earlier. You have to go back and find it and look for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry, Instagram. I'm reading. So th apparently somebody said something on my live on Facebook, and I don't know what it is, but the people in the, um, the people in the comment uh, were, they were going back and forth, and I think it was right. Uh, saying he don't get it yet. That's that's a big part of the problem, or his issue. It ain't my problem, but his issue, whatever. He don't get it yet. So what he's talking about here is. There's been some, I don't want too much of it to go by, but there's been confusion with people saying that Darius Crooks stopped dealing with Corey, this Corey Brim, because he got arrested and Darius fired him. People, <laughs> because people take sound bites. And I, that's why, you know, I be on y'all about making sure you fully understand the context of things. Don't get to, you know, saying stuff if you're not 100% sure of what you're talking about. Because people are getting the story of Darius Crooks' videographer, 23-year-old, 22-year-old Corey, confused with this Corey, Corey Brim, who is like 48 or 49. They're not the same people, not the same story. And so somebody was in the comments saying, this is why Darius Crooks fired you, because you got arrested, blah, 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 this and that. And it's like, you all wrong. You loud and wrong. So that's what his followers were attacking that person saying you wrong because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. This is not the same Corey. And then he gets, he notices it and then starts responding. And then leads into his, his backstory. If I'm not mistaken, should be around here. Done something, had done something. And, um, I don't think it was because of my record, my, my look. And I think it was about Corey, the photographer, not Corey, me. I don't, I don't think, and that's, Another confusion, another confusion, I think. I think it was because, um, I think it was because uh, Corey, the photographer, had done something, had done something. And um, I don't think it was because of my record. My, my Look, if you go Google me, um, my record was I got arrested for, I got arrested for child support. I owed over, just so I'm letting you know I'm being transparent, I owed over $100,000 in child support, which in turn, my license got suspended. So when I got pulled over, I would get arrested because my license was suspended because I didn't pay my child support. It was This was 20 years ago. It was ignorant. It was ignorant. But I don't think that's what they're talking about. I think, again, I think the confusion, I think the confusion comes from um, my name being Corey and the other guy's name being Corey. And then Corey got arrested right so a lot of people thought that was me getting arrested it was not me i'll tell y'all i don't look man look i'm pulling you see what i got here in my this is my this is my pepco bill <laughs> it's in my pocket i pay my bills i pay my the only thing that i do not pay is i do not pay my dc uh camera tickets because <laughs> they, they i'm so sick of them they're not getting that money but anything else in my life i got an 800 credit score i'm not messing up my credit um don't those um I know how they work here in uh in Illinois, but don't those red light camera um don't they turn into collections if you don't <laughs> pay them? <laughs> like I don't think you could just be like I'll never pay it. I don't think that's how that work, y'all. Is it? Y'all let me know for sure though, but it sounds like <laughs> that 800 credit score is gonna take a hit if you don't finally take care of it. On top of that, they will um well again, I'm pretty sure if it I think it works like this anywhere. They'll eventually impound your vehicle. And he's he has these uh these trucks that he parks at events, so they out on the street. He gonna come out and it's gonna be gone. <laughs> right. Harry is saying yes, and they suspend your license. Any of y'all from the DMV area to let us know exactly what they do there? Because I'm like, I'll here, you ain't gonna be able to do that. I, and he's saying it bold and loud, loud and wrong. <laughs> Sound like Darius Crooks is just gaslighting. Now, I don't have no warrants. <laughs> my I, my child support, I had gotten it down to a manageable thing of, I think I got it down to like, I made one, I walked in and I paid, it was, I got it down to $38,000. And I walked in and I and I paid the entire 30, I, I said, how much do I owe? And, 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 and I want to total it all up, right? And I, and I, and I paid $38,000. And they didn't believe that the money that I was, it took like almost three weeks for them to take the money 
because they didn't they didn't believe that that large well it's not like I paid a million dollars whatever but they didn't think the money was they didn't think the money was real they didn't think I was paying it off they they thought it was a fraud thing or whatever and I was like no please take this money so I can get my life back right I'm, and like I always say I made a mistake I made a mistake when I when I was in my twenties you know what I'm saying in my early thirty I made a mistake twenty years ago I made a mistake that I, and it's not an excuse not an excuse. But I, I am every day making up for the dumb things that I did in my past. Um, I'm going to start with the Iceman, Corey Brim. Right. What uniqueness do you bring to the group? Uh, I included this. This is the last little clip. But I included this to show how much of a joke uh Corey because when you look and you say well damn Corey you don't seem to know nothing because we I mean he talked for an hour and eight minutes I cut it down for y'all <laughs> y'all welcome <laughs> I cut it down for y'all um but in in part of what he was saying was the fact that um people talk about you all that other stuff that we we listen to but it became clear because he don't know what's going on that they don't really take him seriously and they consider him a joke and so I included this little clip to close this out to show what they really think about him and how they really treat him and why he might actually have been left out of the loop for real. <laughs> not an excuse, not an excuse, but I, I am every day making up for the dumb things that I did in my past. Um, I'm going to start with the Iceman, Corey Brim. Right. What uniqueness do you bring to the group? Uh, <laughs> really? Really? I think, I think that, um, I think I represent those people out there that, um, you know, you have a business, you're doing your thing. What's that? The heterosexuals. <laughs> all, all the straight men. I think, I think I represent those people that like, so like, look, Darius, Darius has built his brand. He has millions of followers. Jeremy has built his brand. He has hundreds of thousands of followers, right? So, mm -hmm. like, I'm the guy that's like, I'm the, you know, I don't have that. I mean, I got some followers, don't get me wrong. But, like, they they built this amazing, incredible brand, which I have, too. But I think I represent those people out there. There's, like, the everyday people that are just hustling, grinding, trying to get it out the mud, never giving up on themselves, and, um, and, and, and um, just believing in that they have a vision and a dream. And, on their purpose of what God has for them, man. I, I just I just feel like that's the type of followers that I have. It's just regular, everyday mom and pop people out there just grinding. <laughs> you know, <there's, laughs> they're just regular people out there that just they want they want to see one of us make it. You know what I mean? They want to see somebody that has a similar background that they have, comes from a common place that they have. And cause sometimes people Darius is totally cool, and y'all, Jeremy is one thousand percent cool. Most people that are at the levels that they are at, and I'm not, I, I, I know that I'm talking to the regular folks out there. Most people that are at the levels that they are at, they're bougie, snobby. They need boss water. They need red M and M's in their trail. They're bougie and snobby. Uh, Darius Crooks just we watched a clip of him. Now he's in Bali. For one, he's even now live. Uh, educating people on international travel, like <laughs> like he's an expert at it now. But also, he earlier was saying that uh, everybody who's not over there with him right now, uh, they have dead end lives. They're miserable. They don't have love in their life, and they're fat and unhealthy and everything else. Uh, that sounds like somebody who's arrogant and full of themselves to me. Like he's better than everybody because he's traveling right now. You know what I mean? And these two are not even like that. They are so uh, welcoming, warm, engaging. Like I said, he gaslighting us, y'all. All these goddamn clips I got around here <laughs> that we just even watched today. <laughs> they even where I'm at, they inspire me every day. I mean, I don't even know. Can y'all see what I'm doing? I don't even do this no more. <laughs> they got me stepping my game up. They got me putting out content. They got me pushing products. We lost various on Instagram. I'm about to start playing the music. I don't I don't see hate. I don't have haters. I have confused fans. That's what I have. So I don't look at it as hate. In fact, might I say this, the more they try to hate, the more money I make. So I have amassed a um 
a business principle and a business foundation that includes any negativity, spending it, and pocketing the cash. So hit me with the hand. Hit me with it. I'm gonna spend it every single time. Ghost boy, we had four hundred thousand dollars. What's up? Oh, jeez. No, I'm yeah. gonna, I just need to borrow. I just need to borrow fifty. I'm gonna pay you back in like two years. <laughs> you get it. You get a bunch of confused and, hands like I got. Then you you'll be able to do it. Okay. So that brings to an end uh, our torture <laughs> no tomatoes no tomatoes i know it was it was long it was long <laughs> like now that we got through it i was like okay that was a little longer than we needed i did I'm, I'm always when i'm rushing and feeling like okay i don't know should i leave this should i take this out should i leave this but i did cut it down from an hour eight minutes so give me some grace <laughs> give me some grace uh i'm gonna read some comments and then we're gonna get out of here please hit that like button if you haven't as of yet we got 413 viewers currently 344 likes i thank you to all of you who have liked please share this video as well also, thank you. Did I say it earlier? I think I did, but I see her see her in the chat. But thank you, Shanice, for my uh, uh, polo head. I appreciate it, friend, uh, from my Amazon uh, storefront. If you, anyone else is interested, this is my birthday month. Y'all ain't got to get me nothing. Just your views and your likes is, is good. But if you want to, uh, my birthday is coming up April 17th. And I do have my Amazon store, which is linked in the comment section below pretty much every recent video. And I'm going to put it below this video as well uh, when we get off of here. Um, okay, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Don Smart, is, Don Smart is saying, Vail, do the comedian voice, please. I don't know what you mean by the comedian voice. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, flew halfway around the world to cook the same mess from at home. This was earlier. Nellie B is talking about how Darius Crooks is over in Bali cooking the same old collard greens and uh the same meals that he cooked what what did he he was talking about some type of corn gravy or something or other stuff out of his cookbook that he's uh been cooking not trying new cuisines not saying let me incorporate a fusion of uh indonesian food and soul food no he ain't that creative like that y'all he ain't that creative he just gets some chicken and put it on a stick and something about his elevated cooking uh, Corey was drunk most of the time. Chocolate is saying the reason Corey's out of the loop is because he was drunk, slobby drunk the, the entire time. Uh, he he's, he's drinking water now, so it looks like he's trying to sober up or something. Uh, Mistress Melt says he needs to pay his child support. He's saying in that live that he has now paid his child support, uh, the 100K uh, in full. We will see. Uh, well, y'all will see because I don't be digging that type of stuff up. But if not, y'all, I'm sure y'all will figure it out and, and it'll be out there. And I don't know. Uh, Darius was setting up for the scam in the beginning. You don't pay for anything. And then here comes the knife. Exactly. S. Smith. Exactly. They have to get you. It's called grooming. He did it for me. He did it to me for 10 years. He ain't borrowed no money from me. We ain't have money issue. Money was just never a, a thing in our friendship or anything. Then that last last year, <laughs> he got me <laughs> right in the back. Ah, I didn't see it coming. Um, he is in too deep with Crooks. Crooks gonna have to show him what he's really about. It will happen. I believe it too. If Crooks don't completely cut him off, uh, if they end up in this book cookbook venture situation, he gonna get him that kind of way. Darius Crook is so self-absorbed that I don't see him spending time to help um, help Corey do his book at all. He'd be lucky if he get a couple conversations out of him with some advice. But like for him to help him, help him plan it, anything. Mm -mm. Crooks ain't got it in him to concentrate on helping nobody else for any length of time. I know that to be factual. Uh, has LaQuinty said anything Brando so wants to know? Um, not to my knowledge, and I wouldn't be surprised if she never does. You got to keep in mind, like, most people are afraid of what would happen to what we've seen happen to a Jeremy or a Chantel, or I mean, there are tons of stories down going down the line. People are afraid of that. And so when they're not social media savvy like that, they're not an influencer, all of that. I think she's trying to be, but not on a, on a, you know, she, she's a, um, um, macro, um, 
So yeah, I don't, I'm not surprised. I don't expect people like her to speak out because she'll get she'll get um, annihilated by the DHAGs, and they know that because they see how they do it to other people. I ain't gonna even get straight from the gate no attention today. But thank you for subscribing because that was the only way you can make that comment. Uh, Kiki Gray says, despite his uh, personal transgressions, Corey really is a good dude. Uh, I haven't had a single negative interaction with him. It was disheartening to see him caught up in anything with crooks. Uh, Kiki Greer is saying that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything about uh, him personally. Um, I'm seeing comments that say other things, <laughs> but I've heard. Uh, actually, I've mostly heard the other stuff. Um, S. Smith is saying it's so funny to watch this after knowing what we know. Yes, it is very. And that's why I'm glad that we're covering it the way that we are and we're archiving and kind of doing the deep dives as we go. Because then all we got to do is look back to footage we did a couple of weeks ago. And we like, hello, this ain't matching up. We just live through this, like literally, like it's around the corner right there. But I love it because you get to see the guy, the level of gaslighting, not only from Darius Crooks, but those people, his minions, the people in his in his group. Right. But brother, husband, uh, Deborah, right. He's using that that term uh, freely and then think he's going to attract a woman, a straight woman. OK. Oh, the poll question I'm closing out is, do you think that Corey was talking about my videos on Darius Crooks? 95% of y'all said, yeah, 5% uh, of y'all for some reason don't think it. But he literally said, and this guy, like he don't know who I am. <laughs> and this guy did a two hour video. Who else is doing two hour videos on him? Now there's people doing TikToks, but TikToks are max 10 minutes. Who else is doing two hour videos on Darius Crooks, y'all? Bell B, y'all know that. Now, other people cover him here or there, but they don't give him that much time. You know, I do the deep dive. Uh, Jacqueline is saying he sold it as an experience, not a dinner. Yeah, I think I responded to this earlier. Yes. You don't know what you're going to get. It's an experience. You might get your, your dessert first. And I was like, what? <laughs> dessert first? <laughs> you done ruined my whole meal. I'm eating the sugar first? Crazy ass. <laughs> So it's just a, a a surprise. What? Not for three, four hundred dollars. You better let me know from A to Z every step of the bit. You better let me know in five minute increments what I'm gonna be doing this whole night <laughs> for three, four hundred dollars. You like hell? Keisha Morris is saying no one was saying what he was saying. Right, Keisha. Um, as far as Corey's statement and Jeremy's, there's a line with each other. But Darius Crooks is all on his lonesome saying my team and what the guys want to do and blah, blah, blah. Making it up. If it was actually a group thing, why not go live with the three of them like they did for the Q&A or like they did when they were supposedly planning the menu but not listening to the audience <laughs> who was watching saying Hennessy everything. And the whole Hennessy thing was a grift. The reason he did all Hennessy was because he wanted an endorsement deal from Hennessy. He probably figured because it was an alcohol company that his horrible reputation wouldn't matter. And maybe also, we I got to be thinking sometimes stuff come to me. He's also then shielded his reputation, the toxic, horrible reputation, is shielded because he can push Jeremy and um, Corey to the front who don't have those horrible reputa reputations and they could be the ones interacting with the brand. She be on a grift and then she realized that wasn't going to work. So now I don't need y'all because y'all was just going to be a, a shield for me to still be able to get brand endorsements because I cannot get them on my own in my own name because my name is Ish. Remember, we're not talking about somebody who's never been able to get brand deals. We're talking about somebody who has ruined their ability to get brand deals. He's had Walmart. He's had Macy's. He's had uh, other little things. He's been in Essence. He's been in, um, he's been in other little articles and stuff. He had national attention. He ruined that with his scamming. 
Then his plan was, if I get two other influencers, put them in front of me, now I'm going to go for brand deals again. Didn't work. Didn't work at all. Nicole Wilson, has it been said if everybody got their money back? So uh, Nicole, I think, is referring to the uh, Three Kings tour. Um, to my knowledge, I have not seen anything. If there's anything out there that anyone has seen, feel free to you know, send it to me in a VIP text community. I could have had that scrolling across the bottom of the screen. The VIP text community, or you can DM me on Instagram or something uh, if you see any receipt screenshots of people saying they didn't get it. I was expecting and hoping that people would get their refunds. And I think they may have because Darius Crooks wasn't in charge of it. Uh, I think he assigned it to Dez, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and on top of that, Darius has some money. So he his grift is a little different than it was when he was struggling, where he he stole every dime he could steal. Now he he picks and chooses when he steals. And especially when he's being watched. So it looks like everybody might have got their money or they still. Well, it'll be a month um, next. What? Another week, week and a half. It'll be a month. So if we don't hear nothing by then, we can kind of safely assume. I think that most people got they got their refunds. But if not, if you're one of the people that did not get your refunds, feel free to come over here. Hopefully we'll have. um I ain't going to give it away, but we may have a surprise coming. <laughs> we might have a surprise coming and probably next week, hopefully, but uh, we'll see. I ain't going to say too much. Uh, Don Smart says he says nothing. He says nothing when major corporations call him out. Right. When Hennessy called him out, he's, he didn't say nothing. When Men's Health Magazine canceled, he was uh, in the top influencers, top 30 influencers, something or other. And he was in the food uh, influencer category. They yanked his ass like a thief in the night. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> when they found out she was a scammer, took off the list. The article went out, y'all. It was a digital. Went out. I got the screenshot. We talked about it months ago, last year sometime. Article went out and they still yanked. They removed it off the website and <laughs> gone with the wind. Took it. And the Taste Awards. And other stuff. Uh, what was her name? I got that one. We gonna we gonna do that one one day. What's her name? Kim Kimball. Remember Kim Kimball, who had the reality show. She's a hair a celebrity hairdresser in L.A. and she had the Kim Kimball studio. I don't know if she still got it, but she had that. She had her reality show, which was full of drama <laughs> with hairdressers. But anyway, she has a YouTube channel, or at least had. I don't know if she's still working on it or what. Had a YouTube channel. Did a, a pre-recorded video with Darius Crooks. Uh, people got wind of it. She premiered it. People was like, you got a scam on here. He did this. He did that. Did you see the Black Enterprise article? Blah, 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 this and that. She yanked that thing. I was in the middle of recording it because I knew I knew it probably wasn't going to stay up long. I was in the middle of recording it in the video. when I <laughs> She pulled it down within... Uh, an hour or two of it going up. She was like, oh, hell no, you're not going to mess up my brand, <laughs> you scammer. I didn't know. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I literally have a screen recording and then it just goes, <laughs> this goes blank. She pulled a video down. I didn't even know they could pull it down in the middle of you watching it. <laughs> ah, so much, y'all. So, oh my God, this has been an adventure, I tell y'all. This has been an adventure. Uh, they said... <laughs> They said Darius got a BBL. I wouldn't put it past her. I would not put it past her. Uh, that looks like a pamphlet. Oh, yeah. Mom, uh, Maddie's mama is saying that Corey's uh, book, it's very thin. Very. I mean, it looked like it's all of 15 pages, but have at it. I ain't going to hate on his grind. Speaking of photographer Corey, when he go to court again? I don't know. I have not been following the Corey thing, I did make a conscious decision because I do have the footage of him going to court, the virtual hearing that he had. Um, he's done some other lives and stuff. I may show those, but I decided uh, I didn't want to show that. He's not the criminal. He's not the scammer. So I'm always careful. I know that people associate themselves with Darius Crooks for cloud and all that good stuff or bad stuff, but he's a 22, 23-year-old 
he learned he he and he's an independent business he's he was not an employee of darius crooks he's a guy a young guy who owns his own company who contracted with darius crooks so i don't want to put that footage out there i mean it's already out there and it's been online uh, on the, uh, the the different groups and on twitter and stuff but i, I made a conscious decision that i don't want to do that to an innocent black man who's just trying to really make it in life because uh contrary to the narrative that's been put out there i don't hate on people who are actually doing good and trying to do well his mistakes in his life or whatever happens that ain't got nothing to do with us he hasn't scammed any of uh people he's not out there doing uh toxic devilish stuff that darius crix is doing so i'm not gonna show that footage but i will eventually uh show his live streams where he's talking about his relationship uh, or situation ship with Darius Crooks. Um, but yeah, I won't be showing the court stuff and all that. I got it, but I'm not showing that. Um, HPP was telling Harriet, yep, people have been spreading information about Corey up where he lives. He's definitely looking for new victims. So I'm noticing that it looks like some of y'all from the DMV area this ain't the first time I'm hearing it. That's one of the reasons why I'm displaying it. So people can be cautious, mindful, etc. cetera, uh, are saying that uh, Harriet is saying, I know, well, I don't know if Harriet know, <laughs> like maybe I shouldn't put your comment up. Uh, it's saying, I know Corey because I used to do credit repair with him and a group. People are saying that he got his own little, that he got a history as well of being like Darius Crooks on, on whatever level. Might be how he got that uh, 100K to pay them child sports. <laughs> Bree Crutch says, uh, damn, how many kids does he have? Yeah, I don't know that. I asked that in one of the lives um, a while back. And I, when I watched the replay, I think I watched the whole replay, but I don't know. Uh, I never saw an answer to that. So I don't know how many. Um, yeah, I don't know how many uh, children he has. I don't know if anyone really knows. But um, with that, um, I thank all of you for viewing this evening. Thank you again, Shanice, for my beautiful hats. Um, and um, I will be, thank you, thank, thank you to those who um, were messaging me, like, Vail, get your ass back on this camera, because <laughs> I probably could have took another day off, another week, really. But um, I appreciate y'all for letting me know that you appreciate this con content. Please hit that like button and subscribe to also let me know you like this content so that I'll continue to come back with more. Uh, we will come back tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. I'm going to come back tomorrow. I got to figure out what we're going to talk about, but I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, and then we'll just keep going from there. So with that, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But thank you to my mods. Um, I see Alice and Don Smart. I saw Marianne was in there. And donna hammond and whoever else i may be missing thank all of you for your support on that front end uh helping with the moderation and um yeah with that until tomorrow uh no we'll go uh, we'll go live a little earlier tomorrow uh 7 15 central 8 15 eastern uh but until then uh y'all make sure to take care and be blessed